चेक करना जरा यूट्यूब नहीं नहीं यूट्यूब में चेक करना पहले हम ओके सी यर वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द थियोरी ऑफ अलाउंसेस ओके नाउ सी इन अलाउंसेस फर्स्ट दीज मेनी अलाउंसेस यू टू रिमेंबर विच आर एग्जाम फ्रॉम टैक्स एंड वंस यू बाय हार्ट दीज अलाउंसेस देन यू डोंट हैव टू वरी एनी अलाउंस यू फाइंड इन द क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज नॉट फिटिंग इन टीसी हट टीसी उधर इट विल बी टैक्सेबल ओके एंड राइट नाउ डोंट पे अटेंशन ऑन एंटरटेनमेंट अलाउंस दिस विल बी डिस्कस्ड एट द एंड and see in this keyword of tc hut tc udhar what we have done t t for tribal area allowance it is exam up to 200 per month then c1 was children education allowance 100 per month per child for maximum two children then children hostel allowance maximum 300 per month per child for maximum two children then third c was commutation allowance it is an allowance for journey between office and residence and it is exam only if the employee is physically handicapped Up to three thousand two hundred per month. Okay, then next alphabet is H. H stands for house rent allowance. H for house, house rent allowance. Now, what is house rent allowance? If employee has to stay in a rented house, so his expenditure is rent, and to meet rent expenditure, he is given house rent allowance. See, as I told you in the last lecture, allowances are either given for some expense. or for the pain in the job okay either they are compensatory nature to uh, compensate for the pain in the job or it is given for some expense so this allowance which i am saying right now house rent allowance it is an allowance for some expense but for which expense rent expenditure because there are many people who have to stay in a rented house and to meet the rent expenditure company gives house rent allowance okay now since it is falling in the list of exempt allowance that means it is okay and basically government feels house rent allowance split the entire list of tc hut tc udhar i will take it at the end okay because this explanation little bit detailed and i don't want to go in detail right now once i want that i should finish everything in tc hut tc udhar and then at the end we will do house rent allowance okay but right now just remember it is exam see i have written here look it is exam and there is a formula for this but to understand the formula in depth we will take some time so i will do it at the end okay then after h u stands for underground allowance you know this allowance is given to whom employees working underground in coal mines there is a movie also right now you know yes Yeah, Mission Rani Ganj. Okay, there was a movie right now, Akshay Kumar. Okay, there you saw people are working underground in the coal mines. Okay, means you have to work under the ground. See, firstly, working on the ground is comfortable. Now, if you have to go under the ground, so obviously the climate and the atmosphere there is not uh, comfortable over there. Okay, and that too you have to work in a coal mines, so you will be totally black. Okay, so because of this pain in the job. you are given compensation and that is called underground allowance means any employee who has to work in coal mines he is see actually for every mine you might be getting allowance but exemption is given if you are working under the coal mines because see other mines are not that uncomfortable but if someone has to work under ground in a coal mine then it is very painful and for that if you are given allowance then only it will be exempt that means if in the question they give you underground allowance for some other mines not coal mines if it is some other mine then it will be taxable exemption is only if you have to work underground in coal mines and here the amount is fixed 800 per month maximum 800 per month will be exempt see how much company will give you it is a choice of the company see company might give you 1000 rupees per month 5000 per month just because you have to work under the ground in a coal mine so what amount company has to give it is their choice it is their money but what law feels that we are ready to exempt up to 800 per month and they are exempting because they feel it is a necessary allowance 
because they feel sympathetic and pity for the employee that a poor employee has to go under the ground and he has to work in a coal mine it's a bad suffering so for that if company gives the allowance government fees he should be given but they will give exemption of only up to 800 per month so next was underground allowance look at this for working underground in a coal mines exemption is maximum 800 per month okay then in tc hut next alphabet is t t stands for allowances to employees of transport undertaking allowances to employees of transport undertaking see transport undertaking employees means what you know for example you are a truck driver or a bus driver and full day you have to drive the truck or the bus so you know in the process of driving you have to take halt many time you have to eat some food you have to fill the diesel you have to pay toll naka many expenses you have to incur so for this expenses in the course of driving the truck or the bus you are given an allowance that means if you are an employee in the position of a driver so you will get a basic salary plus you will get some extra amount for expenses incurred in the course of driving because see driving is not a simple job means this truck drivers and bus drivers they take the bus and truck they travel for full full day and full full day and they keep traveling throughout the day and throughout the day if they keep driving you know what expenses they have to incur firstly every time they have to repeatedly fill diesel okay and then there are some toll charges okay and then sometimes they have to repair the truck or the bus and they also get tired they want to eat something so for these expenses they are given some allowance and even this allowance law fees it is necessary and wherever government feels it is necessary, necessary government will exam so even this is exam but how much 70% of whatever you receive you know the logic of 70% is what government fees whatever the driver gets 70% is spent for official duties but 30% is for personal expense like he has to eat every time he takes a halt while driving the bus he gets down he has to eat he will drink tea but that is his personal benefit but whatever amount he has to spend for official purpose like filling up the diesel repairing the bus or paying toll naka toll charges these are official expense so law feels that 70% will assume it is spent for office purpose and whatever is spent for office purpose he has not enjoyed the benefit personally yes some amount he is enjoying for his personal benefit like he eats the food he takes some snacks he has some uh, tea etc okay he might have some cold drink whatever but that is for his personal enjoyment so that personal element we assume it is 30% it is just an assumption see exactly we are we are not going behind the driver that where where he goes when he gets down for eating food and when he gets down for filling the diesel we don't know exactly what is happening but law feels that 70 percent is spent for official expenditure and 30 percent is for personal entertainment and whatever is spent for office purpose government says it should be exempted so and that is how much 70 percent but sometimes 70 percent amount can become a very big amount so they have kept the limit also maximum 10,000 per month because see in case a driver gets 20,000 per month for these expenses so 20,000 per month 70 percent of that comes to 14,000 but government says no 14,000 we don't want to exempt we have a capacity maximum 10,000 so in short there are two limits 70 percent or 10,000 but then whichever is lower see whenever government has a double mind so you have to stick to which mind the one which is lower and here why double mind on one hand government feels 70 percent should be exempted but then on the other hand government feels 70 percent can sometimes become a very big amount especially when the driver is getting a huge amount so 70 percent will also become a big amount so they want to limit it to maximum 10,000 per month so that's why a formula has come now either 70% of whatever he gets from the boss or 
टेन थाउजेंड पर मंथ विच एवर इज लेस सो दिस इज फॉर होम ड्राइवर्स और नॉट जस्ट ड्राइवर देर आर समाइम हेल्पर्स ऑल्सो विद ड्राइवर है ट्रेवल्ड बाय बस सी वेन एवर यू गो बाय बस आउट स्टेशन समवेयर सो देर इज वन ड्राइवर and along with the driver he has got some helper or some conductor whatever so even for them the rule is same so whether you are a driver in the course of driving or you are just a helper if you get this kind of allowances the rule is same see i just use the example of driver repeatedly but that doesn't mean it is only for the driver the person who is involved in transportation so person involved in the transportation can be driver also as well as the helper also okay so see what is the rule for this read what i have written here transport employee allowance means allowance is received by transport employees okay and the rule is 70% of what you receive or 10000 per month whichever is lower whichever is lower whichever is less see i'll just take one example to show how to present in the exam look assume in the question it is given That employee has received twenty thousand per month. See this twenty thousand, which I have written. I am assuming that the driver is getting from his boss twenty thousand per month. So first, what you will write? Twenty thousand per month into twelve. You will write it in the inner column. See twenty thousand is just an example. Some amount they give in the question, right? So whatever amount is given in the question, first you will write it in the inner column. Okay, and then what you will write? Tell me. Nil, what will be the wording? Less. See this. Less. Exam under section ten fourteen. All the allowances are exam under section ten fourteen. So you will write less exam under section ten fourteen. See here. And then what is the formula? For seventy percent of. So see seventy percent of. Two lakh forty thousand. Two lakh forty thousand. See he has received how much? Two lakh. So first calculate seventy percent of that. That is how much? One lakh sixty-eight thousand. Sixty-eight thousand and ten thousand per month is a fixed amount. So multiply by twelve months. So that comes to one lakh twenty thousand. And then out of the two, whichever is lower. I hope you understand. This sign indicates whichever is lower. So what is lower? One lakh twenty thousand. So minus that balance in the outer column. Okay. So this is allowances to employees of transport undertaking, whether you are a driver or a helper or a conductor, anyone involved in the transport activity. Okay. Then T C hut T C udar. Okay. Now see next alphabet is see this T C hut is done. Okay. Last we did was T T. Okay. Now in T C udar, you will find one common thing. All the allowances are given for office purpose. Whether it is T, C, U, D, H, R, I will tell you the full form. But these are all allowances given for some office expense. See, like children education allowance was not for office expense. Children are your personal children. They were personal in nature. House rent allowance that is your personal expenditure. You have to stay in house. You have to pay the rent. So personal expenditure. But Right now, the allowances which are going to come up in T C Udar, they are all allowances for office purpose. And since the nature of all the allowances in T C Udar is same, the rule is also same. You know what is the rule? It will be exempt to the extent spent. For example, boss is giving you one hundred, and you have spent fifty, so fifty will be exempt. To the extent spent, it will be exempt. I'll take an example and make you understand. But right now, I want to say is T C Udar. All the allowances, the rule is same. Means now you don't have to bother that for each allowance some different different amounts will come. Now for all the allowances in T C Udar, the rule is common. Exempt amount is the spent amount. Okay. See with example. Wait. First, let me take this T. T stands for traveling allowance. You know this traveling allowance is given to whom? Employees who has to repeatedly travel out station, it is not for local traveling. For local traveling, we say conveyance allowance. That will come next. Right now, when we use the word traveling, travel word is used for long distance journey. Say, for example, an employee he is situated in Mumbai, 
but due to some office work sometimes he has to go to bangalore sometimes he has to go to chennai sometimes he has, goes to new delhi so he keeps going out station not for his personal family holiday it is for office purpose so for that don't you think every time he goes out station he has to purchase train tickets or flight tickets yes. so for that ticket expenditure for that ticket expenditure company gives him a fixed allowance and you know why company is fixing an amount only on monthly basis because what company feels every time you will have to go bangalore new delhi kolkata company feels we are not going to take ticket for that you will get a fixed amount every month you purchase the ticket with your own money now because see otherwise it will create a trouble for the boss what every time employee has to be sent to bangalore boss will have to purchase the ticket and to book a ticket it is not a simple thing means unnecessary for silly things boss has to waste time so what boss says see or booking the tickets and all that that headache you take and you don't worry i will give you one fixed amount every month and when a fixed amount is given every month then only it can be called as an allowance see the speciality of allowance is what you know it is not given randomly it is fixed as a salary only every month a fixed amount will be given and i'm just justifying that why a fixed amount is given because the employee has to repeatedly travel every 10 15 days he goes out station and every time he goes out station booking the ticket for him it will increase the work of the boss so boss says that headache you take booking the ticket and all because you have to frequently travel but don't worry you are traveling for my office work so i will give you the money as a fixed amount on monthly basis then it becomes a traveling allowance okay now let's assume boss has given him every month 2000 fixed so 2000 is what he is receiving but out of that how much will be exam that depends upon how much he has spent because the boss is giving a lump sum amount on monthly basis every month you keep 2000 2000 2000 2000 but his actual travel sometimes it is less sometimes it is more some month he doesn't travel only so depending upon how much he has actually spent that much amount will be exam and how much he has spent we will not come to know as a student it will be given in the question in the question they will also give you how much he has received and they will also give you how much he has spent and one thing is sure how much he has received will be a fixed monthly amount but whatever he has spent that actual amount they will give in the question so see for example look in the question traveling allowance is given like this read 1000 per month is given so 1000 per month means this is what he is actually receiving from the boss see allowances you don't receive separately huh? last lecture what did i say your monthly salary you get a check so in that monthly salary check that allowance is automatically included it is just while teaching the student it is discussed as a separate item see here a separate item traveling allowance 1000 per month but in real life that 1000 was not given as a separate amount whatever is a salary 25000 19000 40000 it is included in that only okay but in this statement we have to present as a separate item okay see our statement is like this only each item you have to present separately although boss might be giving you a single common check but in the statement you have to show the breakup of each item because for each item the income tax rules are different okay so anyways traveling allowance i just wanted to say you get it along with your monthly salary only but i have to show you separately so let's assume he received 1000 per month wait by the way how employee will come to know in his monthly salary what is his basic and what is his traveling allowance he is given a salary slip employee is given a salary slip and with that slip he will come to know see normally employees don't bother they just want to see this much money i have got i'll put it in my bank that's it but if you are interested company will give you a salary slip with that you can understand oh this is my basic 
and this is my traveling allowance this is my house rent allowance you will come to know the exact breakup okay and that breakup is useful for a chartered accountant because a chartered accountant has to decide the treatment of each item with the breakup okay so tell me in the salary breakup traveling allowance is 1000 per month so first what you will do write it in the inner column now from this you have to see how much he has actually spent on his outstation tours okay and that will be given in the question so let's assume in the question they have given 5000 he has spent but then why did he receive 12000 because see boss is not measuring his tours boss has fixed an amount on monthly basis imagine your employee i fixed an amount every month i'll give you 1000 1000 1000 1000 but that doesn't mean does it mean that you will travel with 1000 only you may travel less also okay and normally boss will give you an amount little bit on higher side okay mostly they will give you an amount little bit on higher side and your actual expenditure may be little less okay so in this case it is like this only your actual amount is actual amount spent is only 5000 so 5000 exam and this 5000 will be given in the question please don't by heart see in tc hut you had to by heart the amounts okay 200 800 and that formula 70% remember but in tc udar there is nothing to by heart exemption depends upon how much is spent and spent amount will be given in the question so in my example it is given as 5000 so minus 5000 outer column 7000 but see for you it is given in the question 5000 so you take 5000 but you know what happens in real life in real life what people say that i have fully spent because no one is going to ask for the actual tickets that you have spent fully so where did you go did you go to bangalore what was the price of the ticket you went to chennai what was the price of the ticket they are not going to check in detail see i am not saying income tax department do not do any checking they do checking but they are mostly behind a businessman because businessman does lot of manipulation in his profit calculation so their focus is mostly on a businessman salaried people they pay less attention and right now we are discussing a salaried person so salaried person will usually say what that i have fully spent no one on this earth is so honest and genuine that he will say no my boss gave me 12000 but i have spent only 5000 so if you say honesty is good honesty is good but then 7000 will become taxable but usually people are tax evaders no one likes to pay tax so what people say that i received 12000 but my traveling was so much that i had to spend everything he will say everything is spent okay and everything is spent means full 12000 minus and in the outer column it will become zero and see this outer column amount is most important lesser the total lesser will be your tax okay anyways that is in real life in exam don't act over smart that why are say why are you saying 5000 only you should say you have spent fully in exam don't go against the question if in the question only they have said he has spent 5000 you minus 5000 you should not act over smart yes in real life if you get some client as a chartered accountant if he says no i have spent only 5000 then you act over smart don't say 5000 say fully spent so that there is no tax okay but that is in real life exam honestly you write whatever is spent in the question okay so this were traveling allowance now see this same rule is applicable for all the items of tc udar but see wait one more doubt some students had asked me the doubt sir what if it is 15000 you spent because see your boss gives you a lump sum amount every month okay and that is just an estimated amount every month 1000 1000 so in our example it comes to 12000 12000 he was given okay now what if your actual amount spent is 15000 so if it is 15000 then it is fully exempt 
because see in real life you see spent amount means maximum to the amount of spent you will be exempted so if your spent amount is 15000 you cannot make it negative because in real life take it on you if you have spent little more you are going to recover it from your boss you are going to recover it from your boss what will you tell your boss that sir you gave me every month 1000 1000 1000 for traveling purpose and that came to 12000 but this year i had to travel a lot for your office work i had to spend 15000 give me 3000 more you will recover it and no employee will leave it imagine if you were employee will you leave your money no you will say i didn't go for my personal travel it was not my holiday with my family i had gone for office tour so if you have to spend more you are going to recover it in short you should not worry that 12000 minus 15 i will show a loss your loss will not come see this is not deduction this is an exemption means your income government can at the most exempt fully you receive 12000 so it will be fully exempt you cannot create a loss see loss comes where like in income from other source we had one sum yes that to generate the income you spent more amount then you create a loss but a salaried person will never make loss think practically will a salaried person will go in loss no losses can occur under the head capital gains income from business income from other so house property also sometimes your house maintenance is so much but you are getting less rent because there you are working independently but when you are working like an employee as a job will you ever suffer loss in case you have to spend something from your pocket also you will not leave your boss you will recover it so under salary loss is never possible to be imagined okay see why i am saying this because some students you know what they do 12000 minus 15000 they write negative amount why negative amount in case you have spent more also you are going to recover it from your boss so nothing goes from your pocket okay but that has not come in the sum till now ever it is just students usually ask me the doubt so that's why i told you first only that in case you are thinking that what if sir we have spent little more so let it be you will make it zero in the outer column zero means it is fully exempt okay okay one more thing in case amount spent is not given means this amount is not given only you just know that he has received 1000 per month that way 12000 spent amount is not given assume fully spent and it is a better assumption because see in real life the one who gets traveling allowance it is not free of cost only if he has to actually travel for office work he is given otherwise an employee who sits full day in the office why will boss giving traveling allowance the fact that he is given traveling allowance definitely he travels but we don't know his actual travel amount so we have to assume fully spent in short what i was saying if spent amount is not given then we can assume fully spent because one thing is for sure he has spent definitely otherwise if an employee doesn't have to travel doesn't have to spend no boss is a fool to give him traveling allowance so if he is given traveling allowance one thing is sure it is spent but if we don't know the amount spent so assume fully spent fully exempt okay so this was t traveling allowance see we are at tc udhar tc hut tc udhar now in tc udhar t we have done traveling allowance next alphabet is c conveyance allowance you know what is the difference between traveling and conveyance traveling is for long distance traveling outstation and conveyance is within the city for example an employee has to travel within the city only by local train local buses auto rickshaw and it is say for example employee situated in mumbai so sometimes he has to go to borivali sometimes he has to go to church gate sometimes he has to go to bandra so it is all local traveling for that he is given conveyance allowance but even that is for office purpose only imagine an employee is an office boy he is a peon he has to travel here and there again and again sometimes by local train sometimes by auto rickshaw so he has to spend and for that small small spending every time boss will not give the money he will fix up an amount every month 
Otherwise, you think how irritating it will be if my pion say, sir, today I went by auto rickshaw, give me eighteen rupees. Today I went by local train, give me ten rupees. So every time I am not going to remove the money for him. I will fix an amount on monthly basis. As I said, allowances are fixed amount on monthly basis. Every month I will give him a fixed amount on estimated basis. And usually, boss will give little higher only. And then out of that, whatever is spent. Exam balance taxable rule is same. Whatever is spent will be exam balance will be taxable. Okay, now see one good thing. Can you tell me the difference between wait commutation allowance, traveling and conveyance? See this. See this drawing will make very clear. This is office. This is residence. Okay, now for this journey, what you get is called commutation. commutation allowance. Okay, now once you reach the office, for office work, if you have to go outstation, then it is traveling. Okay, and if if you have to travel within the city, it is conveyance. You know what is this? I have drawn. This is the city boundary this is the limits of the city see for example we are in mumbai city so beyond this you are going gone out of mumbai okay out station and this is out station or in station so for in station traveling it is called conveyance and for out station it is traveling and between office and residence or regular routine journey that is commutation okay now tell me the treatment of all This is also exam. This is also exam. This is also exam. But this is exam only for handicapped employee with a fixed amount of maximum three thousand two hundred per month. Correct. And what about traveling? Amount exam will be up to the amount spent. Even conveyance allowance amount exam will be up to the amount spent. But for commutation, we don't see amount spent. See, commutation is actually a personal travel because coming to office every day and going back to home is a personal journey. You do anything at that time, your personal work because you are out of office actually. See, when you travel in this uh, distance, it is it becomes a personal travel, and for personal expenses, there is no rule of amount spent. Did you notice when the allowances are for personal purpose, government fixes an amount up to this much, and if something is for office purpose, there is no fixed amount. Depends upon whatever you spend. And do you agree that commutation allowance is not office purpose? It is a personal journey, going to office, going back to home. That is a personal journey. Okay. So see this thing you should draw. I will also draw it neatly when I share the notes today. For this journey, what I will write? Commutation. Okay, and then within the city, it is conveyance, and outside the city, it becomes a traveling. Okay, so this kind of thing I will draw when I share the notes. I have not already drawn it, but I hope you understand the difference between all. So where were we? T traveling, C conveyance allowance. You for uniform allowance. Some employees have to work in uniform. For example, an employee is working in an airline company. He is a pilot or air hostess. So pilots, air hostess, they have to work in a particular uniform. Or you are a watchman, security guard. So if employee has to work in uniform, there are expenditure related to uniform. Purchasing the uniform, maintaining the uniform, and maintaining is a regular work. Purchase of uniform is only one time, say twice in a year or once in a year. But maintaining is a regular activity, but that will again increase your expense, and that is also expense of office. For that also, company gives you allowance. But this allowance is not given to everyone. Huh? It is only to those who have to work in a particular uniform, like air hostess, pilots, watchmen, security guard, factory workers. They are given uniform allowance, and here also the rule is same. Exam up to the amount spent. So, for example, in the question they give you uniform allowance thousand per month. 
So first what you will do? Thousand per month into twelve. Twelve thousand in our column. Then less exam under section ten fourteen. Then how much? That will be given in the question. Amount spent will be given if they say four thousand eight hundred minus four thousand eight hundred. And in case amount spent is not given, assume fully spent. In short, see for every allowance in TCU, the the rule is same. Only the name of the allowance is different. Differing. Even the nature is same. Nature means all are for office. But every allowance has a different name. Traveling, conveyance, uniform. But everything is for office purpose. Then next alphabet is D. D for daily allowance. D for daily allowance. You know what is the daily allowance? Look here. Look. See, I will draw this thing once again. Right now, what did I say? For your journey between office and residence, you are given commutation allowance. Okay. And then, if you have to travel within the city only, conveyance. local traveling that is conveyance. Okay. And then, if you have to go outstation, long distance journey, then it is a traveling allowance. Correct. Now, focus on traveling allowance. Now, tell me, an employee who has to go outstation, he will have to stay in hotel because his house is in Mumbai. And if boss is sending him to Bangalore every time. Or Chennai every time, or Hyderabad every time. So he has to go out station, and he doesn't have a home there. So he will stay in a hotel. So look here, hotel, hotel. So these expenses are also his expense. They are also expense for office purpose. And see, it is not just about the hotel. Every day he has to eat food. Okay. So for his expenses on day-to-day -day basis, when he is out station. He is given daily allowance. You know why the word daily? Daily means it is for your day-to-day -day expenses when you are outstation. You might have gone outstation for fifteen days, ten days, but whatever you are gone out of station, and there you have to stay in a hotel. You will have to make arrangement of food on daily basis for that day-to-day -day expense. You are given daily allowance. So see in this drawing. Actually, I have highlighted four allowances: commutation, conveyance, traveling, and the expenses of hotel, etc. See, hotel is just an example. Any expense where when you are outstation. See, if you have to work in your city only, then there will be no extra expense. But if you are sent outstation to a different city, obviously going to a different city apart from the plane tickets. You have to incur other expense, arrangement of staying in a hotel, etc., etc. For that, you are given daily allowance. But the rule is same. Even this is for some office work, so it will be exempt to the extent spent. Wait, he had a doubt. No, no. Traveling allowance is typically for tickets. See, when company gives you traveling allowance, it is only for the tickets. Cost of the tickets, whether you go by airline or by train, it is only for ticket. The word travel, travel means a field of travel. Travel means tickets. And for your other expenses, when you go out station, you are given daily allowance. See, although the word daily is very general term, but actually in real life, it is not for general thing. It is for your day-to-day -day expense when you are out station. Okay. So in short, an employee who has to regularly go out station, he is given two allowance for the tickets, traveling allowance, and for his other expenses out station, he is given daily allowance. Okay. Then T C Udhar. In Udhar, next alphabet is H. H stands for helper allowance. Helper allowance. Now see, for example, an employee. He has got lot of work in the office. So much of work he has come. He has started complaining his boss. Boss, what is this? I have also my personal life. Full day I have to sit in the office. So much of work. What to do? I am not able to manage. Every day my wife is fighting with me that you don't come to home on time. I doubt you, etc. So it is creating problem in my personal life. In short, employee is complaining about workload in the office. And he is finding the workload is too much. So in such case, you know, boss will say what? See, I can't help. 
I know you are fed up with the excessive workload, but then work has to be done. I cannot reduce my business. My business is increasing, so your workload is also increasing. But I have sympathy with you, full sympathy. So what boss told him, you know, do one thing. You keep an assistant. You keep an assistant. assistant. He will help you in office work. And don't worry about his salary. I will give you a fixed amount to you, and you pay him salary. Because see, what boss says, I am. I don't have time to search an assistant for you. But you feel overburdened with the office work. You can hire an assistant. I am giving you the authority. You hire an assistant. His job will be to help you, helper, helper. And obviously, he will not help you free of cost. He will also expect some salary. You pay him, and for that, I will give you helper allowance. Means I will allow you some money to keep a helper, to keep a helper. Okay. So this is helper allowance. So tell me here the transaction will be like this. First boss will give a fixed amount to the employee every month in the name of helper allowance, and then employee will hire some assistant. and he will also spend on him and what is the rule whatever he actually spends will be exam in short the rule everywhere is same first you have to see how much company is giving so that you will write in the inner column like this and then how much he is actually spending that also is given in the question you minus it okay so this was helper allowance see i told you first only All the allowances are having same rule. Reason because all allowances are for office purpose. And what is the mentality of government? You know, whether it is traveling, convenience, uniform. After all, everything is for office purpose. So for us, it's one and the same. That's why the rule is one and the same. Exempt amount depends on how much you spent. Then last is research allowance. R for research allowance. now research means employees job is to keep doing research maybe an employee is a scientist and as a scientist he works in a company and does normal work also plus he has to do some r and d but if he has to do some r and d activities r and d means research and development obviously he will have to do some trial and error experiments for that he needs money so company has given him authority don't worry I, your salary is one lakh. I will give you twenty thousand extra. I will give you one lakh twenty thousand. That extra twenty thousand you, I am giving you for doing research. Means for research expenditure, he is given extra amount. And see, if company gives him some extra amount, employee will also feel like doing some research. Otherwise, what employee will do? Why should I do research? Although I am a scientist, if I do research, who will be benefited? My boss. Why should I do? that employee mentality will come that's why company say don't worry you do research and don't worry about the expenditure research i will give you one fixed amount every month and that becomes research allowance so t c udhar t for traveling c for convenience u for uniform d for what was daily allowance when you have to go out station For the tickets you get traveling allowance, and for other day-to-day -day expense you get daily allowance. Okay, then helper allowance, R for research allowance. But everywhere the rule is same. See in this one presentation, everything is understood. See whether it is traveling or whatever. First write the given amount in the inner column, and then minus what is spent. Balance in the outer column. At the most, what will happen? Spent amount you feel it's not given. So there also I told you now if spent amount is not given, then minus full. Assume fully spent and fully exam. Okay. So all the allowances are taught. Now what is remaining? H H for house rent allowance. See, are you noticing why this group and this group is different? Because these are mostly personal types, not necessarily personal, but they are not pure office expense allowance. Mm -hmm. See, yes, this transport employees, drivers, 
there allows for little bit personal little bit office also what this transport allowance for employees of transport company drivers that allows for little bit in personal nature little bit office nature why personal because the driver has to have food also while driving the bus or truck so that becomes his personal expenditure and he has to fill the diesel toll charges that is office so that was a mixed nature that's why 70% is exempt assume it's for office but apart from that all other are personal in nature type that's why the group is kept different and everywhere there is a formula or an amount like in tribal area there is an amount 200 per month and in all the three c's children education children hostel and community there was fixed amount and in house rent allowance also there is a formula underground allowance of fixed amount 800 per month and here the fixed formula 70 percent or 10,000 per month which are is less in short what am i making you notice that here some fixed amounts and formulas are there but in tc udar nothing is fixed amount spent will be the amount exam because all are for office purpose only that's why i have made it as a different group otherwise see i could have done like this in t only i could have said t2 because there are two t's in the whole keyword but i wanted to keep tc udar as a separate group okay and tc hut as a separate group otherwise if i could if i merge then there would have been only one keyword tc udar how this t i can merge here this t also i can merge here all these c's also i can merge here in this one keyword also i could have finished everything how two t's sorry three t's how three tribal and the transport companies driver etc and this travel so i could have merged and made a single keyword okay and that would have sound simple but it would have created confusion it is better to keep the group of tc other separate because these are allowances for office purpose and these are not for office purpose these are compensatory personal type allowances and here there are some fixed amounts okay now see what is remaining is h h for house rent allowance now see here for house rent allowance there is a formula okay now see first i will do one thing i will mechanically use the formula and explain how to solve then i will explain the logic that what is the logic of this amount what is the logic of this 50 percent that logic part i will explain after some time first you should know how to solve because there our half work is done and the balance half is to explain the reason that why logic part okay so logic i will explain after some time first do one thing directly try this one assume in the question house rent allowance is given 6000 per month assume it is given 6000 per month see some amount will be given in the question okay let us see how to use the formula and see using the formula is not a big thing but knowing the logic is a big thing that i will explain after some time first let us solve what is this 6000 what is it this is the amount which company has actually given him every time you feel you are an employee and consider me as your boss okay so assume every month i am giving you 6000 6000 6000 so every month 6000 so for the whole year how much 12000 sorry 72000 so this i will write first in the inner column because it is exam but now how much you will minus here for this there is a formula okay so let us use the formula without understanding the logic for the time being so tell me first what should i write here less no you should not directly start any formula first you have to write the dialogue exam under section 10 13 a so no here it is not 10 14 all the allowances are exam under section 10 14 but this is under 10 13 a you know how to remember h r a 13 a a the sound of a see h r a is a very famous short form p 
पीपल नेवर से हाउस रेंट अलाउंस इट इज कॉमनली कॉल्ड एज एच आर ए सो हाउ टू एच आर ए टेन थर्टीन ए एच आर ए टेन थर्टीन ए सो रिलेट विद डेट ए एंड ऑल अदर अलाउंस इज टेन फोर्टीन ओके नाउ वॉट इज द फर्स्ट अमाउंट इन दी फॉर्मुला फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी तो लेट्स अज्यूम अवर एम्प्लॉज सैलरी इज सिक्स लैक्स सी हिज सैलरी विल बी गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन लेट्स अज्यूम इट इज सिक्स लैक्स सो फर्स्ट पॉइंट फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ सिक्स लैक्स हाउ मच थ्री लैक्स सो सी यर कीप चेकिंग इज इट राइट देन वॉट इज द सेकेंड अमाउंट एक्चुअल अमाउंट रिसीव्ड बाय हिम See, actual amount received means six thousand. See, imagine you are an employee. So, if I ask you, what is the amount you received from your boss? Six thousand only. Six thousand is the actual amount received. So, but that is per month. So, into twelve, seventy-two thousand means this is the same amount, seventy thousand. Then, rent paid minus ten percent of salary. So, rent paid means what? How much rent he is paying? Because see, why is he getting H R A? Because he has to stay in a rented house. So obviously, employee might be knowing the rent which he is paying. If you stay in a rented house, will you not know the rent which you are paying? And that will be given in the question, and that has to be given. So assume rent paid by him is. See, don't worry about all this data. Every data will be given in the question. So rent paid ninety six thousand minus. 10 percent of salary. His salary is how much? Six lakhs. 10 percent of that comes to 60,000. So accordingly, this comes to 36,000. Now see this black figures. One, two, three. Out of the three, we have to select whichever is lower. So what is lower? 36,000 is the lower amount. Okay. So this civil minus C 36,000. Balance in the outer column. This thirty-six thousand has come from here, huh? But see, you never know. Out of one, two, three, anything can be lower. So see, solving is not a big deal. If I ask you just buy at the formula, you will buy it happily. But in long run, you will get frustrated. What is the every time sir is asking you to buy at something? So if you don't understand the logic, you will feel frustrated. So now you guess the logic first, then I will explain. Means what is the logic behind this formula? One, two, three. Which is less? See, you should never think. No, it's a law. It's a rule. We have to buy it. See, it is a law. Income tax is a law, but there is a logic behind the law. Okay. See the one. For example, currently who is the finance minister? Nirmala Sita Raman. Nirmala Sita Raman also, if she makes any rule, there is some thinking. And if that thinking you understand, then only you are understanding the real taxation. Otherwise, this formula by adding the formula is not a big deal. You will find this in the study material also. But knowing the logic is important. Think. And logic of all this is not written in the act, ah. Huh? I am able to tell you based on so many years of experience, because twenty four by seven I am into income tax only since twenty five years more than that. So based on experience I will be able to tell you, but let me make it clear in the income tax act they don't tell you the reason. This is the rule follow. That's it. So guess what should be the logic behind this? Okay, I'll do one thing. Try one by one. What is the thinking behind this? Then this and so on. First, focus on this because my explanation will also start with this. So see here. First, he tell me why government is exempting house rent allowance. 
why government doesn't say house rent allowance you received pay the tax taxable it is not taxable it is exempt but why because government feels pity that you don't have your own house so paying the rent is a burden do you agree see people who are having their own house they are blessed because having your own house means it is a blessing but people who don't have their own house they have to stay in a rented house rented house do you agree that rent is a burden yes so government is feeling your burden oh my god you don't have house you have to stay in a rented house so rent is a burden but you know rent is a burden when when you have to pay so much of rent if 10% of your salary if you have to shell out on rent it is not a big deal see god has not given your own house you have to pay rent and that also if you have to pay up to 10% of salary only then it is not a burden because see look imagine my salary over is 6 lakhs so what is that what is 10% of that 10% of that is 60000 means if i have to spend 60000 on rent then government will not feel sympathy government will say big deal you don't have house your bad luck and so you have to pay rent you pay and that also you are paying only 60000 it is not a burden but if you have to pay more than 60000 then government will feel it's a burden that means see up to 10% of your salary if to, if you have to spend on rent it is not a big amount because see whatever income you are getting obviously we understand your whole income you will not spend on rent why do you earn income for your livelihood you want to grow your children you want to eat food for you to arrange food for family there are many expenses in family but whole salary you will not put in rent but out of your full salary of 6 lakhs if you have to pay 10% 10% actual logic of 10% it is a nominal amount it is just a small amount 10% it is nothing means out of 6 lakhs if you have to pay rent of 10%, 10%. means how much 60000 so it is nothing but this guy says no i am paying rent of 96000 then government feels oh my god then it's a burden on you means if you would have paid Sixty thousand. Look here. Wait. If you would have paid sixty thousand, then we will not feel feel sympathetic for you. We will not feel pity on you. But you have to pay ninety six thousand. So what is the extra amount? This extra amount is pinching you. Okay. This extra amount is pinching you. That means this is a burden. See, you should not say ninety-six thousand is full burden. Why? Little bit amount if you have to spend it is not a burden. A little bit means what? Sixty thousand. But over and above sixty thousand, if you have to pay ninety-six, then thirty-six thousand becomes your burden. burden. And if your burden is thirty-six thousand, you know what government feels? You should get a support of thirty-six thousand from the boss. You should get. see you need support when there is a burden so if government says your burden is 36000 then your boss should give you 36000 but employer says no my boss is giving 72000 so your boss is generous let him give it is his money but what we feel that a person having a burden of 36000 should get 36 and if you get 36 we are ready to exempt because it is justified you should get that much but how much 36 but see this guy he received 72000 then government says you are getting some extra only huh then you pay tax on the extra amount this is a logic okay so see if you just buy it like a formula Rain paid minus ten percent without using the brain. What is the meaning of this? Then it is a wrong way to study. Okay, so the right approach is ten percent of salary means what? It is a nominal amount. That much if someone has to spend on rain, not a big deal. And law will say that you are not having a 
your own house. You have to stay in a rented house. So this much, so you will have to spend, na? And this must be sixty thousand. But in case you have to pay a little more, then we feel pity that the rent has become a burden in your life. And if there is a burden of thirty six thousand, your boss should give you thirty six thousand. But sometimes your boss or bosses are generous. They give you little more. So let him give it is his money. But we feel it is extra given to you, so it will be taxable. Now, what is the logic of this amount then? Okay. Now my next target is to explain what is the logic of fifty percent of salary. See, actual amount received logic is simple. What, for example, here in my example, what did I say? You have thirty six thousand burden, and if your boss is giving only twenty four thousand, means your burden is thirty six, and boss is giving only twenty four, fully exam, means full twenty four will become exam, and in the comparison, which is lower? What is for the time? He ignore this, right? Right, actual amount received. Why it is there in the formula so that if your actual amount received is less, then it is received in the limit fully exam. So best example is for the time being. If I take this as twenty four thousand, then understand conceptually that government fees your burden is thirty six, and if you are actually receiving only twenty four, that means you should be fully exempted. You are not even getting thirty six, only twenty four. Tax free, and in the formula which is lower, automatically twenty four will be lower. Mm. And when you prepare the statement, inner column twenty four minus also twenty four, outer column zero. Correct or not? Yes. If this is twenty four, this amount is nothing but the one which is in the inner column, mm. and minus also twenty four. So actual amount received, I don't have to justify. Okay. But what is the logic of this fifty percent? So see, for example, I will make one change here. Look, assume this amount of ninety six thousand. I am changing. What if this was four lakhs? Ten thousand. Means assume he is paying rent of wait wait what is four lakh ten thousand rent actually paid by him. Means imagine he is staying in a sophisticated house for which he is paying a rent of four lakh ten thousand. Feel his salary is how much six lakhs. Person earning a salary of six lakhs four lakh ten thousand is spending on rent. He is mad. He doesn't have other expense or what? The only expense is rent for him. It seems. So in short, the example is little weird, but just for the sake of understanding, what if the rent paid is four lakh ten thousand? Then, then in such case, you know what? Government will say, see, sixty thousand. If you have to pay, it is not a burden because sixty thousand is just ten percent of your salary. So it is a nominal. Amount, so that is not a burden, but you have to pay four lakhs ten thousand. Oh my God, so much you are paying. So what is the extra amount? Three lakh fifty thousand. So his burden is three lakh fifty thousand. But now government will say what you know. See, we understand you have got a burden of three lakh fifty thousand, but we have also a capacity to help you. We can help you maximum fifty percent of your salary. And what is your salary? Six, Six lakhs. Fifty percent of that. Yes. Three lakhs is the maximum budget. We understand. We have full pity that you are you are to suffer a burden of three lakh fifty thousand. But then we have our capacity. See, just because employees having so much burden, government is not going to get so emotional. That your burden is three fifty, we are ready to exempt till three fifty. 
see government doesn't get so much of emotional see for example there is one poor child he is in need of 1 crore okay 1 crore is too much he is in need of say 2 lakhs he desperately needs this for his mother's treatment so i feel like helping but in my pocket i have got only 50000 so i will be able to help only 50 although that poor child deserves 1 lakh but in my pocket only I have got. So I will help according to my budget. So this is kind of government's pocket. See government also has budget to help people. If government gets so much emotional. Oh this guy has a burden of 3,50,000. So if he gets 3,50,000. We will exempt fully. And if he gets more than 3,50,000. We will tax. Means now government will not help you till 3,50,000. Now government will limit to its. 50% of salary. In short, you know, this 50% salary means what? This is the maximum exemption which government can give. Then even though your burden is too much, sorry, we have full sympathy with your burden, but we can help at the most 50% of salary. See, did you understand my feeling? I wanted to create so much burden, 3,50,000. So government will feel pity that 3,50 is so much burden. I don't know how you might be surviving. So much of rent you have to pay. We feel full sympathy for you. But sorry, we can't help beyond 3 lakhs. What is 3 lakhs? 50 percent of salary. 50 percent of salary. Salary in our example, it is 6 lakhs. Huh? This depends upon question to question. See. So this is government's maximum budget. Now tell me. What if this employee has actually received 4 lakh, say 7 lakhs 20,000? Assume he has received 7 lakh 20. His burden is 3 lakh 50, and this is 3 lakhs. So, how will you present this? In the statement, how will you show? First, you will write house rent allowance in the inner column 7 lakh 20. See, 7,20 is what he has actually received from the boss. So, in the inner column, first you will write 7,20. Then exemption will be how much? 3 lakhs. Out of the 3, whichever is less. So, what is less? 3 lakhs. But you know, here 3 lakh 90, 50,000 burden has lost the importance. Because government says, we understand it's a burden on you. But sorry, we are not doing a charity. We can help you up to a limit. And what is the limit? 3 lakhs. Means up to 3 lakhs we can exempt you. But your boss is so generous. He gave you 7 lakh 20. That is too much. At the most we can exempt 3 lakhs. See, employee has got two persons. One is his boss who gives money. And one is government who gives exemption. And regarding boss, he can give anything he wants. He might give, he might not give anything. He might give too much also. But that is boss's money. But employee has to go as per the rules of the government. And government's rule we are learning right now. Okay. What boss will give, it is the boss's choice. But what is the thinking of government that I am teaching you. So government's first thinking was what you know. We will see your burden. And if your burden, we feel it is, we can help you. We will exempt that much. But if you are having so much of burden, which is going beyond our capacity to help, what is our capacity to help? Maximum 3 lakhs. Then we cannot do anything. Okay. So this was the understanding of the formula. Finally, you have to buy it now. This is the burden. See, when you are making your own notes, you can also write, this difference will show the burden on the employee. And government wants to exempt this fully, this much amount. But sometimes the burden is so much that government has to restrict itself to its limit. And the limit is maximum 50% of your salary. Okay. Now see, salary means what? Salary means what? See the allowances which you get, that also comes, you know, monthly salary. Salary means what? So, here also law has defined. See here. 
यह सैलरी मीन्स बेसिक सैलरी डियरनेस अलाउंस वॉट इज डियरनेस अलाउंस आई विल एक्सप्लेन इन सम टाइम एंड देन टर्न ओवर कमीशन मीनिंग आई विल एक्सप्लेन बट दिस थ्री आइटम्स यू टू टोटल अप दैट विल गिव यू दिस सैलरी ऑफ दैट यू टू टेक फिफ्टी परसेंट एंड दैट विल गिव अस द मैक्सिमम एक्सेम्शन विच गवर्नमेंट इज रेडी टू गिव यू विथ ड्यू रिस्पेक्ट टू योर बर्डन वी कैन हेल्प यू मैक्सिमम फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ योर सैलरी एंड योर सैलरी मीन्स बेसिक डीएनएस अलाउंस एंड टर्न ओवर कमीशन मीनिंग आई विल टेल यू वन मोर थिंग दिस सेम बेसिक प्लस डी ए प्लस टर्न ओवर कमीशन विल बी यूज इन दिस टेन परसेंट फॉर्मूला ऑल्सो टेन परसेंट ऑफ वॉट सैलरी मीन्स वॉट बेसिक सैलरी डीएनएस अलाउंस एंड टर्न ओवर कमीशन ओके ना वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस आई विल टेल यू बट सी जस्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ एग्जाम्पल लुक अज्यूम इन दी क्वेश्चन दे गिव यू बेसिक सैलरी टू लैक्स रीड रीड दिस पार्ट बेसिक सैलरी टू लैक्स डियरनेस अलाउंस फोर लैक्स मेडिकल अलाउंस वन लैक हेल्पर अलाउंस वन लैक ट्रैवलिंग अलाउंस थ्री लैक्स हाउस रेंट अलाउंस सेवेंटी टू थाउजेंड सो एज एन एम्प्लॉय यू आर गेटिंग सो मेनी थिंग्स इन योर सैलरी बट इन दी फॉर्मुला एवरीथिंग विल नॉट कम रीजन आई विल टेल यू वेट हैव पेशेंस right now just realize one thing that as an employee you get so many things in salary like this employee is getting what what things basic da medical helper traveling hra so many things is getting and everything comes in his monthly salary check ha huh? so as an employee he gets so many things but in the formula you will not take so many things you will take only three things which three things basic salary dearness allowance and turnover commission now see reason i will tell you that why do you take only these three things i have a reason for this also but first let me explain what is basic salary you know what is dearness allowance yes dearness allowance is an allowance to face inflation it is an allowance to face inflation you know inflation is horrifying you know when inflation see rich people don't realize but a person who is middle class or below middle class you know he is terrified by inflation because inflation means things become costly and he has to spend more and a poor middle class or a below middle class person he hardly has some income so inflation is a torture or not so for that torture boss will give you dearness allowance why it is called dearness i will tell you but see you know what happens in real life imagine you are an employee i am your boss you know what i will tell you see you have to do this clerical work your salary will be 10000 your salary will be 10000 plus i will give you dearness allowance 2000 which is 2000 right now but in future if there is inflation i will make it 3000 which amount dearness allowance means i have kept dearness allowance in your package why you know whenever there is inflation i will increase your dearness allowance because in inflation your expenses will increase so you want your salary should also increase so which salary will increase the dearness allowance component you know companies what they do they keep your basic constant so in my example what did i say i have fixed your basic as 10000 and your dearness allowance is 2000 so that 10000 basic salary will remain constant that will no move according to inflation yes if you are promoted promotion promotion obviously. then obviously then i will say okay till now your basic was 10000 now i will make it 15000 because it is a promotion but assuming there is no promotion that basic will remain same but then due to inflation your cost and your expenses will rise how to survive for that company say don't worry along with basic salary i am giving you 2000 dearness allowance that dearness allowance is for that only whenever there is inflation your dearness allowance will increase because if your dearness allowance will increase you will get more money and you can face the inflation and you know why it is called dearness because in inflation things becomes cheaper or costly costly, costly so your money becomes dear 
money becomes dear means see when you call he is my dear friend dear means most precious means you cannot lose him means you value him a lot costly costly is dearly costly and dearly is one in the same but in our friends we don't say he is my costly friend he is my dear friend why actually it's costly or costly means he is valuable i cannot lose him all other friends are nonsense they are all cheap but he is costly see costly is a casual term right now i'm using but we don't say costly we say dear he is dearest so when something is dear that means it is he is very costly is very valuable so in inflation things becomes costly so with the word costly there is another word dear so dearness allows because the things are becoming costly due to inflation you are given dearness allowance okay so something becoming dear and dearer means it will become more valuable and costly okay and you know every employee will get this dearness allowance see the other allowance which i am teaching traveling allowance uniform allowance these some employee might get some might not get but in most of the big company every employee will get dearness allowance along with basic it is a fixed item because see every employee whether you work in reliance infosys lnt whichever company you work every employee has to suffer inflation and for inflation every company will give you dearness allowance you work anywhere it is a fixed item see other thing which i am teaching today i taught you helper allowance rarely you will listen research allowance rarely you will find but dearness allowance every employee gets and what is this turnover commission turnover means sales so imagine you are an employee your job and profile is marketing and company has told you that you have to do the marketing of our product and depending upon the sales which you do for the company you will get 10% commission for example i can tell my staff depending upon how much how many admissions you secure i will give you 10% commission it's a turnover commission turnover means the business if you bring more business you will get a commission based on a percentage of that so that is called turnover commission and even this is received by everyone who is in marketing disclaimer only if you are in marketing yes if your profile is not marketing simply accounting job then you will not get but assuming you are in a marketing profile you are a sales executive then this is also fixed and you know what is the logic of taking these three things these are the fixed item in the salary structure of every employee see whether you get anything else or not this is for sure shot yes turnover commission i will not say sure shot assuming you are in sales profile then turnover commission also becomes fixed but then at least these two are fixed so see the point was what you know as an employee you get many items but in the formula you will take every item or these three items why these three items because these are the constant item of every employee in india see government is making rule for malad kandivali mumbai delhi or india india so they have to take from india's point of view that in our country whoever works anywhere these are the fixed items they get and government is making a formula and formula will depend upon something which is fixed what is the nature of a formula it is something which is fixed and something which is fixed should depend upon something which is fixed and these are the fixed items in the life of an employee okay although in this chapter you study many things helper allowance uniform allowance but this everyone do not get uniform allowance you will get a one who has to wear uniform everyone wears uniform no no but these are the fixed item which every employee gets in every type of profile anywhere in india that's why government gives this as importance in the formula okay so in short conclusion is what in this salary and this salary will you take his full salary whatever is getting from company no he might be getting a monthly check of 1 lakh 
but in that one lakh check you have to see what is the basic what is your da and what is your turnover commission only these three items you have to add for the purpose of salary see it is just for the sake of formula when you are preparing the main statement obviously in the main statement you will write everything which you have received from your boss did you listen what i said in the main statement main means this one in this statement you will write everything which you are receiving from the boss but in the formula you will write everything only three things basic. only three things basic dns and stallor commission okay Yes, the percentage is fixed only. It never fluctuates. Okay. Yes, but percentage is fixed, huh? See, if your sales is more, you will get more commission. But it is based on a percentage. Whether it is five percent, ten percent, but your amount will be increasing depending upon the sales you achieve for the company. so tell me finally how will you deal with hra let us put full stop on hra hra full form is what house rent allowance okay first what you will do first you will write it in the inner column say like that first you will write it in the inner column then what you will write less exam under section 1013a and then you will use a formula and see formula if you want you can use here only in the main statement or you can prepare a working note if you feel it is becoming very congested here you can prepare a working note but with that working note you have to find find out how much you will minus and tell me what is the formula 50% of salary which means basic salary dear the salon sent on our commission okay then actual amount received then rent paid Minus ten percent of salary, and your salary again means basic salary, DNS allowance, turnover commission. This way you will calculate three amounts, and out of the three, you have to take whichever is less, whichever is lower will be deducted. Okay. I yes, that will come. That everything is there in the package. Okay. See, those who already studied little bit of tax, they might. miss some things but see when it is taught for the first time to a student everything has to be taught at a proper time it will come see for your inquisitiveness i will clear this will come later year see it is wait later it is see here it will come okay but right now see you have to go systematically in a particular pattern because see income tax is such a subject that if i teach wrong thing at wrong time if the timing is spoiled the subject will be literally screwed up okay so teaching what is the most important point you know firstly a teacher has to assume you don't know anything these are some important points for a teacher okay don't assume your student will know because once i start assuming this much you might be knowing this much you might be knowing i will cut short on my explanation okay so a teacher will never assume you know anything okay and then teaching in a particular sequence first what to teach then what then what that sequence will make the teacher super hit okay so in case if you want to become a teacher you have to select a proper sequence in which to go if i break the sequence if i start teaching something which is to be taught after 10 days if i teach now the whole subject will be spoiled okay that will come it 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 will come everything is strategically planned okay okay so this is you are seeing for the first time i am doing this since 20 more than 25 years now 25 or now it will go beyond that 97 20 24 yes so it is 25 i am used to saying 25 now it is increasing okay number of years so don't worry everything will come everything is planned that's what was saying you know, the difference between a bad teacher and good teacher is this only a bad teacher will teach every teacher has knowledge a chartered accountant has knowledge 
But if I try to show off and all this, this, that, and that without bothering that they are understanding or not, it will spoil the subject. Okay. So everything will come at a. That's why I'm repeatedly saying because I know student will see sometimes study material. Student will compare this and that. Some students will relate with the past knowledge of in case you study tax already in colleges. Okay. So you will keep relating. That's why I'm repeatedly saying in all lecture everything will come but at a right time. Doing the right thing at right time is called tact. Okay. So this is clear. Now look, wait. This fifty percent is fixed, right? Yes. But this fifty percent is only if you are paying rent in metro cities, Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai. Then only this fifty percent. But in case you are paying rent in a non-metro city, then it is forty percent. Instead of fifty, it will be forty percent. So you have to check in the question whether is paying rent in Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai. Or some other city. If it is some other city, then forty percent. Otherwise, fifty percent. And they will tell you in the question that rent is paid in which city. And one more important point: only if he pays rent, exemption will be allowed. But you know, nowadays there are many employees who doesn't have to pay rent. They have their own house, but still company is giving HRA. And don't find it is weird. See what company says. You know. It is our duty to pay salary to the employee. So let us give in the name of HR. Now whether he stays in a rented house or he has his own house, we have to pay him salary. So sometimes they give the salary in the name of HR. But you don't need HR because you are having your own house. But then, if you are not paying rent, still company is giving you HR. Then it is fully taxable. And it happens with many, many of my friends. You know, they are getting HRA from their company, but they are having their own house. But you know what cheating they do? Yeah. What cheating they do? Yeah. They show as if they are also paying rent. Yeah. They show that I am staying in my mother's house. My mother is charging rent. <laughs> they show rent paid to mother. One of my friend is doing like that only. Yeah. Actually, he he is staying in own house, but actually the house is in the name of mother. In his name, there is no house, so he actually doesn't. Why mother will charge rent? Mother son staying together, but he is trying to say no. My mother is so rude that she charges rent, so I have to pay rent, and he has to make a check in the name of mother and deposit in mother's account, so that he can say that I am also paying rent. My mother is charging, and you know why he is trying to show he is paying rent? Because if he shows he has paid rent. Then only this formula is applicable. Otherwise, if he says honestly, no, I am not paying rent. Oh, you don't have to pay rent. Then you got a zero burden. Then HRA fully taxable. See, exemption is for whom? People who have got excessive burden. Not even ten percent of salary. More than that. See, even if you pay a rent of ten percent salary, then also exemption is not given. That's what I was explaining right now. Because up to ten percent of salary, if you have to pay, it is not a big deal. But if a person is not paying rent only, then he is not having any burden, so it will be fully taxable. So you have to check in the question that if he is not paying rent, then HRA is fully taxable. And fully taxable means what you will do? Directly write this in the outer column. Fully taxable. There no need to use this formula. This formula will be used only if he is actually paying the rent. And depending upon where he pays the rent, you have to select fifty percent or forty percent. If he is paying rent in metro city, fifty. Otherwise, forty percent. Okay. So this was the formula for HRA. Then look here. Look. What do you mean by remaining allowances? If any allowance you see in the question which is not in TC hut, not in TC udhar, then you should not wonder this allowance sir is not taught. Huh? This allowance sir is not taught. Or there will be, there can be thousands of allowance in the question. I am teaching only those which are exempt, and those which are not exempt and not taught to you means they are understood to be taxable. 
so all the remaining allowances will be fully taxable sometimes in the question you will find overtime allowance taxable don't start thinking this sir is not taught picnic allowance this sir is not taught let it be if you have not heard any allowance in tc hut tc udar then they are all fully taxable and fully taxable means what directly write the full amount in the outer column okay come on come on stay strong come on then last thing entertainment allowance entertainment allowance special treatment is there first thing, what is entertainment allowance if you are thinking it is for my entertainment no it is not for the personal entertainment of employee it is for entertaining clients and customers of the business means imagine you are working in a big company and as an employee you are given a work that whenever a customer comes from foreign country or say from outside other city you have to welcome him you have to make arrangement of his stay food etc see entertainment means to welcome welcome whom not your uncle aunties clients and customers of the business mean this is typically an allowance for office purpose because you have to entertain not your brothers and sisters and uncles and aunty you have to entertain clients and customer of the business and they are customers of your boss and you know why boss wants you to entertain the customer because for a business customer is a king so sometimes a customer is coming from out station some other city maybe coming from a foreign country so you are given a work make his arrangement properly a hotel a proper car a, a accommodation food etc make proper arrangement because if our customer is happy we'll get business so that job mainly the employee has to do but tell me wait if employee has to entertain office customers he will have to incur some expenditure for small small amount he will not go to boss sir our customer has come give us give me some 1000 rupees right now i will need because see when a customer comes every expenditure employee will have to do it from his pocket but don't worry for that company will give you allowance and that is called entertainment allowance now see your special treatment means what you know the rule is literally weird when you listen to the treatment of entertainment allowance you will literally feel like what funny law it is but can't help we cannot change the law the treatment is little weird see how it is look imagine entertainment allowance given in the question is 2000 per month see this will be given in the question 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 so assume it is given 2000 per month so multiply by 12 how much 24000 so first you put directly in the outer column as if it's fully taxable okay and then write all other items in the statement total of the statement and you know what is the total of the statement called gross salary you want to see the format which i had shown last lecture look the total of the statement look is called gross, gross salary and after gross salary can you see there is something called deduction under section 16 there something called entitlement allowance is there so see precisely you know what to do look here look first you will write entitlement allowance at the top and then after completing the whole statement after totaling up you will write deduction under section 16 and there you will repeat entitlement allowance effect but here you will show as minus reason i will tell you but see you have to show something like minus means you deduct and you know to minus there is again a formula see the formula is like this 1 upon 5 into basic salary actual amount received and 5000 whichever is lower fixed formula okay i will comment on this after some time first respect the formula because this will give you marks 1 upon 5 into basic salary okay so let's assume employees basic salary is 1 lakh. lakh see every question you will be given a basic salary so whatever is the basic salary take 1/5 of that so that comes to how much 20000 in my example it will not be always 20 depending upon basic salary in the question you have to take 1/5 
then amount actually received see actual means actual amount received for entertainment so what is the actual amount received 24000 and third amount is fixed 5000 fixed and then 1 2 3 which are is less so tell me out of the three amounts which one is lower 5000 5000 so this 5000 will come here can you see 5000 yes. the one which is lower and you know what is the net effect of this you received 24000 but from that 5000 is kind of exempt kind of exempt so what is the remaining amount 19000 will become taxable okay then one more funny thing this is a funny thing ha huh? i'll tell you why i'm calling this as funny and criticizing this one more funny thing this deduction you have to take only if he is a government employee look what i have written here only if he is a government employee then only you have to deduct that means if the employee is working in a private sector he is not doing a government job then here it will be zero zero no formula zero full amount will be taxable i will talk on this let me first finish the rule first so tell me first listen to this mechanically what to do with entertainment allowance first you write in the top of the statement in the outer column then after writing that forget it write other items from the question blah 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 then total up after you total up then you have to check is it government employee yes then use the formula minus it and then if you see no he is not a government employee no formula zero but in any case at the top you have to write okay or you know this treatment is so funny logically you know here the rule should have been like tc udhar here the rule should have been like tc udhar because in tc udhar what did i say all are allowances for office purpose so the rule was logical that whatever you have to spend for office whether you spend full or little bit the amount spent for office purpose will be exempt because the amount which you spend for office you are not enjoying you are given traveling allowance 2 lakhs also but if you spend for office travel so you are not enjoying the money so to the extent you spend for office you should be exempted same thing government should have done here also because even entertainment allowance is for office purpose the meaning of entertainment allowance is what it is an allowance given to entertain clients and customers of the office and since it is an allowance for office purpose the rule should have been the same as it was in tc udhar but it is not like this so it is not just me everyone who knows more about income tax etc they criticize how funny the rule is firstly you know it should have been done here only look this 24000 i should have written in the inner column here and spend the amount you minus and just finish it like tc udhar but here it is so funny first you write outer column then you forget it forget it means you write all other items okay and then you suddenly remind yourself at the end and there also it is so funny government employee then there is a formula and formula has got no sense at least in hra formula there was some sense rent paid minus 10% so we were measuring what is the burden on him year 15th actual 5000 completely nonsense even if it would it would have been sensible why only for government employee why not for private sector year it looks clear partiality because the rules are made by government they are favoring their government employees and all private sector hmm, taxable so it is all funny but let's not go into much depth right now we cannot change the law we have to accept the law okay sometimes the law is not logical but then we can't help and you know you might wonder sir it is so funny why government is not changing this see government if they want to make change they have to do it in budget in budget they have got so many important things in the list this becomes the last priority they are least bothered 
it is not affecting anyone so imagine i am finance minister of the country nirmala sitaraman so to manage the whole country country's economy in budget i have to think about so many big big important issues out of so many issues income tax is one issue and in income tax this is nothing so they are least bothered and every year finance minister when they do planning in budget they don't care about all this thing that's why the rule is like this only since years and years okay anyways can't tell we have to just accept the rule as it is so tell me finally what will you do in exam see best to remember like this if government employee it will come up also down also up also down also up also down also okay remember my scene okay if he is a non government employee only up nothing will come down down means here okay so remember like a scene government employee up also down also up also down also up you will write the actual amount down you will write the formula but up also down also up also down also but if he is a non government employee only write it up in the statement outer column and at the bottom of the statement nothing will come only thak but government employee thak and thak okay so this was little funny treatment but i cannot say funny treatment here in my notes i written special treatment special treatment but our heart only knows it is a funny treatment okay so see this is done this is done then what this you don't have to study all the remaining allowances are fully taxable okay now see this chapter's theory is so lengthy did you notice after basic salary we have just finished allowances only in d w ramu fakir ji one one point i kept finishing d w r a we finished everything in one lecture only but here every item has got a detailed discussion allowance first understand allowance then there are there is a big list of allowance which are exam so this way you know each item has got a detailed explanation that's why this is a lengthy chapter and lengthy doesn't mean tough it is lengthy it takes time but what is tough in this eventually you have to remember okay this is exam this is taxable yes in exam there is a headache sometimes tribal area allowance then it is 200 per month underground allowance 800 per month you don't remember all this na tc udhar thank god no such amount to remember amount exam will be amount spent okay in short see every discussion will have some detailed discussion like this so you know what is my plan if i plan to do like this let, let's finish the full theory first and then we will do the sum you will go mad because allowance took this much time same amount of time will be taken by provident fund gratuity pension and and perquisites at the end it will take lot of time and imagine if i try to finish the whole theory then if i start the sum you know by the time we start the sum you will forget it that's why you know i have structured my question in such a manner as soon as one big theory is over we will be able to solve the sum that's why in the book which i have given to you all the sums i have customized in such a manner so that we can smoothly proceed in the chapter see if you see a study material question even in the first question suddenly look you will find anything from this But tell me, is it a right way to teach a student? Teach everything. Now you forget. You will forget everything then. That's why you know in our book I have customized the question such a way that one concept question, new concept, new question. Concept wise, questions are arranged. Okay. Okay, but see, wait. Yes, basic salary. One point I have to yet explain, but I have customized the question accordingly. see these questions you know these questions will go according to what i am explaining up till now what i have explained based on that a question you will find and as my explanation will move further you will find accordingly a new customized question okay but wait one thing we will have to do without which it is not possible to start some wait 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 although see without the knowledge of look without the knowledge of all these things we can start solving the sum because in my question 
you will not find these things which are not taught only okay but every question this will always come because see in this statement this part is constant any sum you solve of salary the portion which is written in the end it will be constant so without teaching deduction under section 16. 16 it is impossible to start the sum yes i can start the sum without the knowledge of this pension gratuity i will not take such items in the question only but this is mandatory to explain okay so give me some time i will just explain what is this deduction under section 16 it will hardly take some time and then we'll start one question okay now see as i told you deductions is for it is for the expenses if you remember in income from other sources wait what is written here okay yeah. this i didn't show only okay just see once traveling conveyance uniform okay amount x amount spent okay anyway this is dot okay now see see in income from other so there are deduction under section 57 and what did i explain that time that do on any income you have to incur expense and government cannot simply focus on my income they have to respect my expense also because i incur the expense i could generate the income so that's why government said don't worry whatever income you generated your corresponding expense you can deduct and you pay the tax on the net amount that concept will come in all chapter so even for a salaried person he gets lot of salary but to generate salary income he has to incur expense what expense every day he has to go to office that will involve some expense and if the employee is a teacher in a college he has to purchase books means depending upon the type of job you do in a company you have some expense see a salaried employee will not have much expense but they also have some expense you know who has got more expense of businessman i am a businessman i am running a business so for me expenses are unending so many expenses light bill electricity rent etc telephone mobile bills etc etc expenses are unending but for a salaried person he doesn't have much expense but i will not say they don't have any expense they also have to incur some expense every day they go to job so they have to travel so traveling expense is there and depending upon the type of the job if your type of the job is teaching in a college as an employee you have to purchase books it is an expenditure because if you purchase books if you read books there only you can teach students in short this way employees have their own expense so see here employees expenses can be divided into two parts one major expense which every employee has to incur is profession tax and there are some other expense also okay other expense like i gave you example every day going to office will involve some expense and if you are a teacher in a college you have to purchase books etc this other expenses i told you but profession tax is on fixed expense of every employee you know what is profession tax it is a tax on employment once you are employed you have to pay profession tax and it is not income tax see income tax is linked with the income higher the income higher the tax lower the income lower the tax income tax is as a percentage of your income and that is charged by central government profession tax is charged by state government but one common thing is what you know as soon as you start generating income central government will say pay income tax and state government will say oh you started earning income now we are not unemployed you are employed pay employment tax and employment tax is called profession tax see you might feel this is double tax once i start doing the job i am getting income so central government is saying income tax and once i start doing the job i become employed basically this is a tax on employment once you become employed from unemployed right now you are what you are unemployed because you are student you are studying but once you get into some business or job see employed means what you know you can be self employed also 
सो वेदर यू सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयड योर सेल्फ और डू अ जॉब वंस यू बिकम एम्प्लॉयड फ्रॉम अनएम्प्लॉयड यू विल हैव टू बे प्रोफेसर टैक्स बट देन वॉट डाउट अ स्टूडेंट गेट्स यू नो वो प्रोफेशन टैक्स वी टू पे एंड वंस वी स्टार्ट एनी एम्प्लॉयमेंट वी टू पे इनकम टैक्स ऑल्सो इट इज अ डबल टैक्स I understand it's a double tax, but there is a difference. Income tax who charges central government, and profession tax who is charging state government. It cannot be said double tax. Yes, the person paying is common. We understand, but just as we have our duty to the country, we also have our duty to the state. See, our state is closer to us than counts our country. See, we stay in which state? Maharashtra state. so maharashtra government has got its own responsibilities they have got their own duties so how will they remove the money they also need money to discharge their duties so they want tax similarly central government has to run the whole country so they also want money and when state government also wants money central government also wants money who will give money we have to give so although we feel bad but then we have got our duty to the state also and to our country also and for country we give income tax and for our state profession but don't worry profession tax is not a big amount higher side it is 2400 something for the whole year it is not a danger thing it is not a big expenditure for a year if you have to pay 2400 what see you don't have to remember the amount huh? some people have to pay 2500 some the 1200 rupees there are different amounts but how much profession tax a person has to pay you don't have to remember i'm just giving you a feel say round about 2000 also if you have to pay in the whole year not a big deal this much you can contribute to state government and this you can show it as a deduction in income tax means when you are doing reporting to central government income tax you can say central government modi government our state has charged profession tax let us cut it so see you are allowed to cut here see where where in the statement you are allowed to deduct means when you are making income tax calculation income tax belongs to central government huh? so central government says don't worry whatever you have paid to the state government as a profession tax you deduct it and then you pay the tax on the net amount okay so in short profession tax everyone has to pay but you know our law related to profession tax is very lenient many people don't pay profession tax only actually even i am liable to pay profession tax because am i unemployed i am employed so i should also pay but i don't pay suddenly after 2 3 4 years some notice comes i pay together in lump sum with interest and if they don't follow up i don't pay see salaried people have to compulsorily pay okay because company insists them to pay but businessman they are careless they don't pay in short what i am trying to say just for knowledge the law of profession tax is very lenient in income tax you cannot do manipulation 2 3 years you don't pay income tax you are gone but profession tax law is so lenient many people do not pay and the amount is also not big it is just a nominal amount say around 2000 something for the whole year it's nothing okay but whatever the main point is it is an expenditure of the employee so see we were talking about what a salaried person has got his expenses and amongst his expenses one expense is profession tax which he can never avoid but other expense depends upon the type of the job so depending upon type i gave you the example your type of the job job is teaching then you may have to purchase books or if your type of the job is something else you might have to purchase newspapers to be updated etc not so big expense but there are expenses so you know for that what government says okay this expense you minus but for other expense we will give you a straight 50000 deduction we will not see how much you are actually spending a fixed 50000 deduction respecting that you also have some expenses 
बट गवर्नमेंट इफ दे ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट वॉट इज योर एक्चुअल एक्सपेंस पीपल विल स्टार्ट चीटिंग पीपल विल से माई सैलरी इज फाइव लैक्स बट माई एक्सपेंस इज फोर लैक्स फील वॉट आई सेड माई सैलरी इज फाइव लैक्स एंड माई एक्सपेंस इज फोर लैक्स इज ब्लफिंग एंड सी गवर्नमेंट से वी आर नॉट अ फूल बट देन गवर्नमेंट डजन हैव टाइम टू आर्ग्यू विद ईच एंड एवरी वन दैट्स वाई वॉट गवर्नमेंट सेज योर एक्सपेंस यू कीप इट विद यू ओनली वी रिस्पेक्ट दैट यू ऑल्सो हैव एक्सपेंस Although you are a salaried person, you hardly have some expense, but you have expense. But we will not see your actual expense. We will give you a straight fifty thousand deduction, and automatically it becomes a deduction for your expenses. Yes, profession tax you will get a separate deduction. See this. This you deduct it separately, but for this you will get a. standard deduction of 50000 conclusion is what you know whenever you are solving the question if you find profession tax minus it where end of the statement but if you find other expense ignore it instead of that standard deduction so they will deliberately give you some expenses that this employee had to spend this this that that blah 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 but you will ignore it because in place of other expenses you are given a standard deduction see for expense you want deduction only so government is giving you but not what you you say because if government will ask you you will try to say more and more expense so that you get more and more deduction you know income reduces so not your actual amount you will get a standard 50000 okay but that's it see when you study the chapter income from business then you will study a lot about expenditure because a businessman has got so many expense take my example for me what is the variety of income no variety fees from student is the only income fees from students but expenditure you will find a big list so when you study business income there you will study for expenses in depth but in the chapter of salary expenditure theory is done that's it done only one expense you have to respect profession tax which is every employee has to pay minus other expense ignore instead of a standard deduction so see check this this we have already done now this part after you total up the statement what is seen deduction under section 16 first you minus standard deduction amount is fixed 50000 Have you by heart at fifty thousand or not? By heart at fifty thousand, then entered in middle house. That will come only if he is a government employee, and profession tax will come as it is. Okay, yes. See, profession tax is there in almost all states, but after all, it's a state law. if a particular states wants that we don't do, want to levy profession tax they won't levy but practically in india almost every state profession tax is there but it depends upon state to state and it depends upon the state where you are working for example i am working in maharashtra state so i am governed by maharashtra government's law whatever maharashtra government makes the rule accordingly i have to pay tax but this is see actually many students are asking me the doubt sir why this is called profession see don't take the word profession literally literally if you feel the word profession you know what you feel doctors chartered accountant engineers professionals here literally profession doesn't mean actually the proper name of this tax is what is employment tax if you are unemployed you don't have to pay but once you are employed it becomes your duty to pay something to state government so the proper name of this is employment tax because this tax starts only when you get employed or employed means not necessary job it can be job or business business means self employed but once you are employed you have to pay this anyways not to discuss but this will be given as a question you have to simply minus it okay now start with one question see question number first question of income from salaries
see basic salary one point is remaining but without that point also we will be able to successfully solve see my target is what you know as early as possible a question should be solved so that you get confidence otherwise you will keep waiting when sums will come when sums will come and by the time we do the sums at the end you forget all the theory no point because in income tax theory is big sum is nothing and especially salary theory is so big and it is not possible to complete full theory and then sum so i am going step by step okay see what is our strategy we will keep the statement ready statement of income from salary and then one by one we will give the effect of all items reading the whole sum will waste the time my statement is ready statement of income from salaries see i have written a short form here ifs but you can write a full form it's better you write full form income from salaries income from salaries ready see what is given from the following details calculate taxable income from salaries for the py means what previous year. previous year and why do they say previous year because income is always calculated for the previous year and what is our previous year 23 24 this is fixed in the question you will find 23 24 huh? tell me what if they want to write assessment year then they will write 24 25 but if they want to write the word previous year they will write 23 24 anyway nothing to do with that it is just an observation okay now for each point what we will decide taxable taxable, taxable or exam taxable or exam so start one by one basic salary taxable or exam taxable so in the outer column dash or amount amount, amount. but 18000 is per month so multiply by 12 so basic salary 216000 okay then okay now wait wait do one thing do one thing look here do what i am doing see here just underline allowance in all points do this underlining the whole question is full of allowance because other than allowance i have not taught you anything see these are the customized question but in actual exam the question which you get you will find anything in the question in fact in income from salary you will find income from other source also capital gains also mixed but i cannot take the student directly to that level so my idea is step by step we have to move on okay and one day you will be so strong any summit comes you will be able to manage now tell me for each allowance what should be your line of thinking nee line of how will you think means how will you think if it is in tc hart tc other than exam 
otherwise taxable okay so you have to repeatedly use this chart tc or tc udar exam otherwise taxable so tell me first point dearness allowance does it come in tc or tc udar no it is not there in the keyword look here so this is my remaining allowance fully taxable okay fully taxable means full amount outer column you will write full amount how much 5000 into 12 60000 and see even if you write da is okay da is such a popular short form see in day to day life if you say anyone i am getting so much of da it is understood it is a very famous short form see otherwise we are scared to use short form in exam right but for da you don't worry it is very famous da dearness allowance say da 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 okay da then medical allowance okay medical allowance tell me does it fall in tc hut tc udar no so it is fully taxable directly outer column see let them give anything we have to be we have to search everything in tc or tc udar Six hundred into twelve. So that comes to how much? Seven thousand two hundred. Okay. Okay. Then next is commutation allowance. Commutation allowance. Yes, this was there in TC or TC Udar. But that is only for physically handicapped employee. Check our employee have the return. He is physically handicapped. Nothing is given means he is not handicapped. And not handicapped, then taxable, fully taxable. See, if the employee would have been handicapped, then tell me, then what you would have done? Tell me fast. Less exam under section ten fourteen, ten fourteen, three thousand per two hundred per month into twelve. But if they write he is physically handicapped, nothing is given, so it is fully taxable. Directly outer column. see i am not showing the working in detail but you show in bracket in the sense it is 1200 per month multiply by 12 right properly i have written in short because i have got less space in my ipad so accordingly i have written something in short but you write properly commutation allowance 1200 into 12 14400 okay no 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 see if you ignore something you write a note For this, there is no need to write a note. Okay, means he is asking that should we write a note that he is not handicapped. That's why we have taken taxable. See, if you this way, you will feel like writing note everywhere. But you have to balance the time available in the exam. Okay, the rule itself is that it is taxable and exam only for physical handicap. You don't have to mention that in detail. Then. Okay, telephone allowance does it come in TC or TC Udar? No, it is not there in our keyword. So fully taxable directly outer column. Six hundred into twelve. Seven thousand two hundred. Correct. Then lunch allowance. Lunch allowance does it come in TC or TC Udar? so it is fully taxable but wait 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 amount spent is given this is given for confusion amount spent is useful where in tc udhar and not idhar idhar means here okay amount spent we need when it is tc udhar see a paper setter will try to confuse you everywhere he will give amount spent but we should be firm amount spent we need when only in tc udhar but is this allowance from tc udhar this is lunch allowance and lunch allowance doesn't fall in our code word of tc or tc udhar it is fully taxable so take full 1000 per month 
in the outer column into 12 means so see you can write here this you have to ignore you can write a note for this amount spent not so necessary here not so necessary still whenever you feel in exam a doubtful situation you write a note writing is better than not writing so lunch allowance 1000 per month multiply by 12 that comes to 12000 correct then traveling allowance yes this is from tc udhar now we want amount spent now it is not to be ignored now we will consider amount spent because it is tc udhar so how will you write first 1200 per month into 12 will come in inner column then less exam under section 1014 all allowances are exam under 1014 except hra 1013 a it is better if you write this with red pen huh? less exam in exam red pen is not allowed but just to maintain a proper notes you can use red pen here exam under section 1014 8000 outer column 6400 okay wait wait now don't rush don't rush next point everyone will have to wait ready now see children education allowance is very important as far as the presentation is concerned look here look see in children education allowance you know you have you will have to follow one standard presentation see what is the standard presentation look here first you will write children education allowance then you will make a bracket like this per month per child into dash months into dash children okay and then you will write less exempt under section 1014 and then again you will make a bracket like this dash per month per child into dash months into dash children okay and then in this dash 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 you have to fill in the blanks here you will write as per question and below you will write as per rule but you will have to compulsorily present like this only if you try to act over smart by using some other style you will make blunders soon you will realize what blunder you will do okay so present like this first write children education allowance children education allowance then in bracket what you write don't fill the amounts right right now just write dash per month per child into dash months into dash children no need to put the amount because for amount i want to say something then less exam under section 10 14 there also you will write dash per month per child into dash months into dash children okay now tell me first we will write as per the question hmm then as per the rule So tell me in the question, what is the given amount? 90. So right here, ninety per month per child. Yeah, rupees, it's rupees only. Rupees ninety per month per child into how many months? Twelve. Into how many children? Five. Five children. See right now, don't try to show your knowledge of rules. First, you have to write as per the question. In the question, he has got five children. Right, five children. 
See, when we minus the exemption, that time you have to show the knowledge of the rules. So multiply how much you get? 90 into 12 into 5. How much? 5,400. Okay. And then, less. Now you have to use the knowledge of the rule. What was the rule for children education allowance? Maximum 100 per month per child. Maximum means not more than that. If it is less, take less only. Here it is 90, take 90 only. If you would not have arranged like this, you would not have realized you would have blindly taken 100. See, 100 is maximum. What do you mean by maximum? If government says maximum will my allow you to exempt 100. But if someone says I got only 90, then exempt full 90. So whenever I say maximum means it cannot be more than that. If it is less, then take less. See in Hindi I say like this, look here. Kam ho to kam lo. Zada ho to limit me raho. Zada ho limit me raho. Means if it is 110, 120, it is zada. Zada means more. Then limit. But if it is 90, 30, 45, 50, 60, 70, it is less. So what is the dialogue in Hindi I use? Come ho to come hi lo. Zada ho to limit me ro. So here it is come ho. Come means less. So they take less. So see I am writing below 90 only. See 90. Okay but in children if you see. Is it less ke more? Too much 5. Then stay in limit. If it is more stay in the limit. If it is less take less. What if it was only one child in question. Then take one. But here it is five. It is too much. Then limit it. So here I will write two. So see. Five looks something like this. Can you see this? Children education allowance inner column. 5400. See, if you don't arrange in this style, which style? Dash per month per child into dash months into dash children, you will make silly mistake. See, if you are smart enough, you know everything properly, then you do in your own style. Law doesn't say you should present this way. This is, I am telling my students so that my students should not make silly mistakes. See, even for hostel allowance, your method should be like this. Dash per month per child into dash months into dash children. Then first write as per question and then as per the rule. But in rule, that maximum means not more than that. If it is less, take less only. So done, 5400 minus 2160. So outer column comes to 3240. Okay. Then, what is next? See, as soon as, look here. As soon as entertainment allowance comes, you should visualize this scene. Like this, government employee, up also, down also, up also, down also, up also, down also, okay? And if he is not government employee, only up. So, what is he? Is he government employee? So, will you do like this, up also, down also, up also, down also? No, only up. Up means right now we are at up only top of the statement. Just write in the outer column and at the end no formula. By the way, do you remember the formula? One fifth of basic salary, actual and 5000, which is less. But in this question, we will not use that formula. That is only for government employee. Your entertainment allowance as an item, you will write in the outer column. And then forget it. Our job is done. Fully taxable. Because he is not a government employee. See, I am using short form, but you write properly. I am sir, I can do anything. Okay, I am sir. You write neatly. Entertainment allowance. Show the multiplication in the bracket. Okay, then. 
हेल्पर अलाउंस इज इन टीसी उधर एंड इन टीसी उधर अमाउंट एग्जाम इज अमाउंट स्पेंड ओ बट अमाउंट स्पेंड इज नॉट गिवन अमाउंट स्पेंड नॉट गिवन अज्यूम फुल्ली स्पेंड बिकॉज टीसी उधर अलाउंस आर गिवन ओनली वेन यू आर गोइंग टू स्पेंड इट नो बॉस विल गिव फॉर फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट only if you have to incur some cost of office expense then only you are given but if they have not given this spent amount we can assume fully spent so see first i have written helper allowance in the inner column 10800 and then less exam under section 1014 you return full amount okay then next point hr house rent allows But see, be careful. HRA will be exempt only if he pays rent. Is he paying rent? Yes, he is paying rent in Mumbai. So metro cities, so fifty or forty, fifty percent. But see, HRA is a big formula. So if I try to solve here in a limited area, it will become little congested. Wait, wait, wait. it will become congested so you can do one thing you can write hra less exam and then working note if you want you can solve here also but see i am preparing a working note separately so that you know it should not become congested in a small statement it will become congested trust me so you just write hra here and then for exemption we will prepare a working note formula for that एच आर ए वेट वॉट वॉज द अमाउंट सिक्स थाउजेंड पर मंथ सो मल्टीप्लाय बाय ट्वेल्व यू शो दी मल्टीप्लिकेशन द ब्रैकेट हाँ सिक्स थाउजेंड मल्टीप्लाय बाय ट्वेल्व दैट कम्स टू सेवेंटी टू थाउजेंड एंड देन सी वॉट आर रिटर्न लेस एक्सम अंडर सेक्शन टेन Thirteen A. Then leave some lines. Say around six, seven lines you can leave, and come to working note. Leaves around six, seven lines to finish the remaining part of the question. then note number 1 exemption for hra start with the formula first amount is what 50% of salary see how i have written look tell me why i have written like this you forgot i told you Yeah. See, as an employee, you might be getting many things in salary, but in the formula, you will take many things. Only three things. Only three things. See, your fifty percent salary is not that which you actually get from your boss on month-to-month -month basis. You might get many items in the salary structure, but we take only three items of the salary structure. basic salary dearness allowance and turnover commission so tell me what is the basic salary 2,16,000. basic salary is 2,16,000. okay dearness allowance 60000 turnover commission is not in the question so nil ignore it
सो इज इट लाइक दिस बेसिक सैलरी टू लैख सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड डीएनएस अराउंड सिक्सटी थाउजेंड टर्न ओवर कमीशन इज नॉट देर इन द क्वेश्चन फिफ्टी परसेंट बिकॉज इज रेंट पेइंग रेंट इन मेट्रो सिटी सो दिस कम्स टू हाउ मच वन लैख थर्टी एट थाउजेंड सी सम स्टूडेंट आस्क मी द डाउट सर वी आर गिविंग द इफेक्ट ऑफ डियर दस अलाउंस ट्वाइस we are not giving the effect why see main effect of basic salary dearness allowance was in the statement here right now it is just we are doing calculation of the formula in formula we are just trying to find out how much exemption should be given but that is not the main statement see in the main statement basic and da is written that is only one effect we are given it is just for the purpose of formula we have to use this figure once again Because the formula is such that it is fifty percent of salary, so that's why we have to take. In fact, in salary there are many things, but we take only basic D A and turn over commission. Then what is the second amount? Actual. Amount actually received. So H R A, what is the actual amount received by him? He has received seventy two thousand. Six thousand per month. So multiply by twelve, seventy-two thousand actual amount received. Correct. Then third amount is rent paid minus. See how I have written. See. Right like this. Rent paid minus ten percent of basic salary, dearness allowance, turnover commission. Basic D A turnover commission. So basic salary two lakh sixteen, DNS allowance sixty thousand, turnover commission nil. So total of that two seventy six, ten percent of that twenty seven thousand six hundred. Correct. This is twenty seven six hundred. Actually twenty seven six hundred. That ten percent is what you know. This much rent if you have to pay, it is not burden. It is a nominal amount. But he says I am paying fifty six thousand. Then there is a burden on his head. So to the extent he has to face the burden, government is exempting it. And then we have got three amounts at our disposal: one, two, and three. These are the three amounts, right? And you have to select the one which is lower. And put that amount in box, the one which is lower, twenty-eight thousand four hundred. This amount you will deduct. See this how I have done. Seventy-two thousand is house rent allowance. Less. Have you written this exam under section? Ten thirteen a, all are exam under ten fourteen, but this is ten thirteen a. Yes, here you should also mention note one. You have to show the connection that for this I have prepared note one. You write that ah here note one. Then. Come to the question. Okay, now, now see, look at this. Look at this. See what I am doing. See what I am doing. Tell me, can you tell me why did I draw this line? These were all income items.
and these are income items or expenses do you agree with this or just saying just for the sake of saying see this why did i say these are income items tell me because till here everything was allowance and allowance is what an employee receives from his boss so it is income for him see some student told me sir you told allowances for expense see allowances for some expense they are dedicated for expense but as an employee you receive from boss feel you are an employee your boss has given the allowance yes it is dedicated for some expense but that's a different thing but as an employee you receive right so these are all income items but below the line these two are what expenses see profession tax is expenses understood and here they have written other expense related to his job so tell me what is the rule profession tax you can minus but other expense ignore because instead of that you get a standard 50000 deduction and then here you don't have to see whether your actual expense is less or more standard means standard it's flat 50000 whether your real actual expense may be less or more so do one thing what you can write here here you can write deduct and here you can write ignore have you also drawn the line like this you can do it with pencil if you don't want to spoil the book draw this line above for all income items until you come across income items you have to simply add 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 in the statement but as soon as as soon as you come across expense you have to minus it so but before deduction you have to total up see all income items are done and once you are done with all income items you can total up total of the outer column is called gross salary your gross salary comes to 3 lakhs 88040 then see here look look at this look at this this three things you know you should always write whether there or not there in the question see standard deduction you have to always write see even if this other expenses were not given still there is a standard deduction. standard means what standardized it's fixed it's a straight 50 down deduction even if in the question there are zero expenses irrespective of whether employee has to incur expense in his job or he doesn't have to incur everyone gets a flat flat means a straight 50 down deduction and this three things you should always write in this same line first write standard deduction then write entertainment allowance even if not there you write it just for the sake of writing then write profession tax what i mean to say you know this this portion is a fixed format see in the top of the statement you have to write what has come in the question depending on the question you list down the items but the bottom of the statement this part is fixed always the total should be called gross salary then always write deduction under section 16 and write fixed three items in that standard deduction will always come 50000 and what about entertainment allowance that will come if he is a government employee but in our question he is not a government employee so entitlement allows you will put zero or dash or nil whatever 
and then profession tax also sometimes in the question you won't find huh? then don't bother don't write anything of your own choice if it is given write it not given ignore it in our question is it given yes, yes. it is given so i will write it 2500 but if not given just ignore it huh? don't try to show extra knowledge exam that sir has told that people usually pay 2500 something so let me minus don't minus if not given in the question but standard deduction you have to always minus so your taxable income from salary comes to 3 lakh 35 540 3 lakh 35 540 okay Okay, now see here. Look, see basic salary. One point is remaining about basic salary. So, have you heard in real life when your boss gives you salary, he deducts certain item, certain items from your salary, and he gives you a net amount. Means when you joined the job, your boss told you every month your salary will be twenty thousand. But at the month end, when you get the actual salary check, you are not getting twenty. He has deducted certain things, and he gives you only seventeen thousand, sixteen thousand. Does this happen or not? Yes. Means companies have the policy of deducting certain items from your salary. Do you have any knowledge of what they deduct from salary? Yes. yes. Most important item is provident fund. Every company maintains provident fund. And you know, in provident fund, what is the logic? that from your monthly salary if they deduct something and keep it aside it will be useful to give you only at the time of your retirement and what boss feels you know if i give him the full salary right now he will use all the money there will be no saving no doubt employee knows he should save money but every employee is not so conscious about saving the money that's why you know boss says what that see your salary might be this much but i will cut some amount don't feel bad i am cutting some amount for your future only and don't worry the amount which i am cutting for the time being i am keeping with me but i will give this amount back to you at the time of retirement and if i give you at that time that is the time when you need the most because in your old age you will have no income so this money will help you to survive in your old age so every company follows the system of provident fund okay then i am giving you examples of what items they cut from your salary so one is provident fund sometimes they deduct loan installment means imagine employee in the statement you should write the net amount or gross amount this is the main thing see we are not here to study what items they deduct from our salary see for that you don't have to study for that the rule of company every company has a different rule we have to study from income tax point of view then when we prepare the statement you should write the net salary after all deduction or you should write the gross salary that is the main question here so what do you feel see a student will feel yes the company has deducted so many things i am getting some less amount in my hand so what i get net i will write net only wrong you have to write the gross amount in the statement in this statement you will record gross amount. gross amount because your original salary is a gross salary see the amount which you are not getting now you are not getting now you will get some day for example see with example with amount is better to understand let's assume your gross salary was 2 lakhs see i am trying to convince that why should we take gross figure in the statement and why not net that is what i want to convince i don't want to impose take gross that's it but why okay so see assume your gross salary is 2 lakhs and from 2 lakhs 
टेन थाउजेंड इज डिडक्टेड एज वॉट इज द फुल फॉर्म प्रोविडेंट फंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन मीन दिस अमाउंट देव डिडक्टेड एंड दे विल कीप असाइड इन अ प्रोविडेंट फंड एंड दिस एम्प्लॉई विल गेट एट दी टाइम ऑफ रिटायरमेंट ओके एंड दिस ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड अज्यूम इट इज अ लोन इंस्टॉलमेंट एज आई गिव एग्जाम्पल बॉस माइट है गिवन यू टू लैक्स लोन But he will recover from you by deducting your salary. Okay, so let's assume he deducts twenty thousand. Okay, now net amount is one lakh seventy. Now analyze this one lakh seven salary. Look, out of two lakh salary, which is the gross amount, you received one lakh seventy. So one lakh seventy you got in your hand, that will be taxable. This ten thousand you feel I am not getting only. But you will get it. It is your money only, and on your money, if you don't pay tax, who will pay tax? Will boss pay? No. Boss has cut this amount. Provident fund, I am talking about. Provident fund, boss is cutting right now. But after all, who will get? You. Yes, I understand. You will get at the time of retirement. But government will not wait for the retirement to charge you tax. government says you wait till your retirement because it is your future planning we want tax now because after all it is your current salary current salary has accrued in the current year pay the tax in the current year now if you say no but i am not receiving only i will receive on retirement you wait for retirement why should we wait who is saying this government government and it's so government is right in its mentality see government says for your retirement of future planning is being done so that your old age you can survive you do your planning for us salary is accrued now and as you know in accounts also you have studied we record everything on accrual basis so this 10000 wait this 10000 you will receive in future but it is accrued now because you have performed the service you have got right to receive the salary but it is just outstanding you can say but tax is on accrual basis now for this 20000 in short see this is taxable convinced this should be taxed convinced what about 20000 for this if you say 20000 boss has deducted he didn't give me only He didn't give you right now, but earlier you had enjoyed the loan. See, you had taken loan, but and when you took loan, you didn't pay the tax because that time you said it's a liability, no tax on liability. Did you understand what I said? Yes. When you took the loan, see, right now boss is cutting your salary to recover, but earlier when he gave the loan, so when you received the loan, did you pay tax that time? No, that time what employee might have said, loan is not an income; it's a liability, and it's right. Loan is income or liability? Liability. Is it coming in income statement or balance sheet? Balance. It's balance sheet item. It's a liability, and because it was a liability, you didn't pay tax. But now at least you pay. Now if you say no, I am not getting only this twenty thousand in my hand. You are not getting, but you are already enjoyed. But you didn't pay tax earlier because it was a liability earlier. Now you pay. In short, see, even this twenty thousand should be taxed. That means full two lakh should be taxed on gross basis. See, a student will think what out of two lakhs I got one seventy. Okay, one seventy will be taxed. Why not on ten thousand? Ten thousand you are not getting now, but you will get somewhere in future. But government doesn't wait. Want to wait for future? They want to tax it now. Similarly, this twenty thousand you already received in advance as a loan, and when you received the loan, you didn't pay tax. So now you pay the tax because now it is not a liability. Now it is part of your salary. See, loan when you received it was a liability, liability. But now when it is cut from your salary, it is part of your salary. and if you say i am not enjoying only you enjoyed the loan don't say you didn't enjoy this and if you enjoyed full 2 lakhs why not to pay tax on full 2 lakhs see basically we should be convinced eventually i am getting benefit of full 2 lakhs mm. but the difference is past present future yes what do you mean by this 170 i am enjoying in present 
टेन थाउजेंड आई विल एंजॉय इन फ्यूचर ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड आई एंजॉय इन पास्ट बट यू एंजॉयड देन पे टैक्स ओके इन हिंदी आई से इफ देर इज मजा देर विल बी सजा सो इफ यू आर गेटिंग मजा ऑन टू लैक्स सो सजा सजा मीन्स टैक्स शुड बी ऑन टू लैक्स ओके ओनली डिफरेंस इज वन सेवेंटी इज अ बेनिफिट इन प्रेजेंट टेन थाउजेंड इट विल बी अ बेनिफिट इन फ्यूचर बट गवर्नमेंट डजन वॉन्ट टू वेट फॉर फ्यूचर एंड दिस बेनिफिट यू ऑलरेडी टूक इन पास्ट एंड इन यू डिन पे टैक्स इन पास बिकॉज दैट टाइम इट वॉज अ लाइबिलिटी इन शॉर्ट कंक्लूजन इज वॉट यू नो इफ इन दी क्वेश्चन दे गिव यू ग्रॉस नेट ग्रॉस नेट ग्रॉस नेट डोंट मेस अप सिंपली टेक द ग्रॉस अमाउंट ओके एंड यू नो वॉट दे डू दे विल नॉट गिव यू द ग्रॉस अमाउंट they will give you the net amount and they will say from a salary these items were deducted so you will do reverse working are they will give you the net amount and then they will say this is the net amount and from a salary this 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 were deducted so add back whatever was deducted add back add back add back and you will arrive the gross amount in short you have to write the gross amount in the statement okay tell me in our question what we did nothing was given so it was gross nothing was given so that means it was already gross wait by the way one more thing even profession tax they deduct from your salary profession tax today i explained yes even that you know what company does they deduct from your salary only so tell me if profession tax is deducted that also you will add back because although profession tax you are not enjoying the benefit but you are claiming the deduction later on see for this provident fund what did i convince provident fund benefit you will get in future so pay tax but if profession tax is deducted you can say profession tax benefit i am not getting but you are allowed to deduct at the end so first you have to gross it up but if you take the net amount only from the beginning and then profession tax at the end you deduct once again it will amount to double deduction so since profession tax you deduct it separately so if boss has cut from your salary add back and show gross over here see why i am talking about profession tax because it is a standard item see any job you do two things are confirmed they will deduct from your salary provident fund no 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 while boss gives you salary on monthly basis there are two things he will always deduct i am talking about what boss will deduct provident fund and profession tax these are the fixed two items you should you can literally buy at every company even if you start doing a job you don't have to ask the boss you have to understand that he will cut provident fund and profession confirm see loan installment that will come only if you have taken loan it's not confirm but two things are confirm they will always deduct what provident fund and profession tax but what you will do in the statement you will show the net amount of gross gross okay but profession tax you don't enjoy it becomes your expenditure so you can deduct it at the end okay so do one thing try this one if you understood this concept try this one try this we are not solving this sum this is a sum to be taken at the end you know this master problem means what you know in one question i put everything so on exam day just solve this question that's it but right now we are not solving because it will be too early because we have just started the chapter but i just want you to try this point what is written basic salary 22000 per month after deduction tell me what do you mean by after deduction of this so 
that means 22,000 is after deduction. So after you deduct, you get the net amount. So see, they have not written net. But you should understand, this is the net amount. But then what did I say? If in the question they give you net amount, you will write net or gross? Gross. gross. So here you have to convert the net figure into gross. How to convert net to gross? Net. Whatever they have deducted, add back. So this is the net amount. In this I will add back. Provident fund contribution of 4000. Then profession tax of 200 per month. Add and tell me. 20. Yeah, per month it is how much? 26,200 per month. This is the gross basic salary. What do you call this as gross? Basic salary, basic salary but gross figure. Multiply by 12. 3 lakhs. 14,400. That is the gross amount. This amount you will write in the statement. Means you will write basic salary. In bracket you will show this working. What working? 22,000 plus 4,000 plus 200 multiply by 12. And in the outer column 3 lakhs. 14,400. Okay. So the knowledge which I gave you have to use it like this. But only if they write it is net. Either they write net or they will write after, after deduction. Okay. But then see, profession tax you have to deduct at the end also. See, right now you are adding back to make it gross figure. But then profession tax are you enjoying? No, it goes to government. So you can deduct at the end. Okay. So this was the point of basic salary which was remaining. But in our question, it was just basic salary, then we should assume it is gross. See, in our question also, profession tax was there. And in reality, they deducted from basic salary only. But did they give this figure is net? No. Then you should not act over smart. Nothing is given, that means the given figure is already gross. Don't do anything. If they write net or if they write after direction, then you should gross up. Now see, one small thing I will do. See what is that small thing? Look here. After basic salary and allowances, the next theory comes provident fund. Now see, in provident fund, what is my plan? First, I have to explain the meaning of provident fund, types of provident fund, and then taxable or exempt. Repeat what did I say? Meaning. meaning. Types. And then main is taxable exam. Because while solving the sum, what knowledge you require, whether it is taxable or exam. But I cannot directly go there. That I will take it in the next lecture. But at least the basic things. What is provident fund? Okay. Meaning and the types. That much I will be able to do it right now in some time. Okay. Hardly it will take some time. Look here. So what did I say? Meaning, types and then taxable exam. Meaning, types and taxable. Focus that way, okay? Meaning, 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 meaning. Meaning, where is the meaning? Meaning. Okay, this is the meaning. In this drawing, you will understand what is provident fund and how does it operate. Means the concept of provident fund. So, see, right now only I told you that from your basic salary, some amount company will deduct and keep it aside. So, see, assume in this example, employee salary is 5 lakhs. Can you see this 5 lakhs? Yes. And assume from your salary 60,000 they are cutting and keeping separately in a separate account, which is called provident fund account. Okay. And you know, the amount which they cut from your salary is called employee's contribution. Yes. Because you know, there is a custom in real life to the extent they deduct from a salary that much amount they also contribute from their pocket. Yes. So if your boss says I will deduct 10,000 from a salary, 10,000, he will also contribute an equal amount in your provident fund. See, your salary is deducted 
it is for your benefit only but why boss is contributing just to keep you happy and just to set an example don't worry we both will accumulate funds for your old age some amount i will deduct from your salary some i will also put but we are all doing for your old age means this way you know boss is trying to take the employee in confidence otherwise you know many employees take boss negatively boss is a uh, you know corrupt minded person he is deducting my salary he will eat away my money there are employees who might think negatively that why is cutting my salary he will take away the money he will run away so you know boss mostly what he says don't worry if 10000 i am deducting from your salary i will also put 10000 from my pocket and that 10000 this 10000 both we will accumulate together and it is all we are doing for your old age so that means here what employer contributes from your pocket it is a benefit for you means as an employee you should think wow such a good boss he gives me salary plus he is also contributing something from his pocket for my future thank you boss but this is a custom in all the big companies because the companies are very smart they want to keep the employees happy if the employees are happy business will run see i am also owner of a business see as an owner i don't get time much time to attend my business i have got other work so i have to depend upon my staff and if i keep my staff happy they will manage my business properly so every company has a tendency of what to keep the employees happy and to keep them happy they also contribute and that is called what you know employers contribution see what is deducted from your salary is employee's contribution and was what boss contributes from his pocket it is employer's contribution and you know both the amount go in a same place and this money is invested somewhere because see this provident fund employer will not keep it in a piggy bank that money which is saved it is invested somewhere and wherever it is invested on that you get interest. interest and every year this interest is credited in your account on yearly basis this way in your account three amount comes every year this three amounts some amount is deducted from your salary only which is called employees contribution and some amount boss will contribute and see it is not necessary boss will contribute same sometimes boss will contribute more also means if from your salary if he is deducting 10000 he might contribute 12000 anything is possible after all it is the boss who has to spend so it is his choice okay so i was asking in your account every year three amounts are deposited tell me what are the three amounts one is employees contribution other is employers contribution and interest and why do you get interest because this provident fund is not kept in a piggy bank it is invested and wherever it is invested from that every year you get interest and that interest is credited to your account on yearly basis and you know this way one fine day in this account huge amount will be accumulated and at the end the lump sum amount is given to employee tell me what does this arrow mean this arrow means employee will receive but when will he receive what is this on retirement or death means actually he gets on retirement but if before retirement he dies then on death it will be given to his family members but if he doesn't die then whenever he try retires he will get so you can say on retirement or death whichever comes first retirement or death whichever comes first so if death comes first he will get it on death he means his family if he doesn't die then on retirement he will get and why have written this lump sum amount lump sum means you get all amount together in one shot see depositing happens in one shot or yearly basis yearly basis but at the end when you get you get in one shot a lump sum big amount 
every year there might be say one one lakh deposit but at the end you get a big amount is 35 lakhs 40 lakhs a huge amount together that's why i written lump sum amount wait he has a doubt see his doubt is what you know what if he leaves the company retirement is a broad term whether you are removed from the company or you leave the job or you have attained the age of retirement the moment you get disconnected with the company it's a retirement take retirement in the broader sense leaving the job is also retirement see retirement doesn't mean you should become old you have reached that age and now you retire see that is a traditional thinking even if you have worked in a company for five years say six years now you want to leave the job you want to change the job you want to leave but you are leaving na? so once you leave the job it's retirement so retirement is a broad term the moment you leave the job whether you leave sometimes company has removed you even that is retirement okay retirement means termination of your job whatever may be the reason you made a choice company made a choice or your age was too much whatever so tell me what are the four transactions in provident fund four transactions mean transaction one two three four see only if you understand the transaction you will be able to decide taxable exam because see eventually in question what we have to do they will give some transactions and we should know taxable or exam so first understand what are the transactions in provident fund see in allowances there is one transaction boss gives to employee allowance but in provident fund there are four transactions what for employees, employees contribution employers. employers contribution interest and at the end lump sum amount is given to employee so first a student should buy heart this drawing you know literally fix this image in your mind this is the way provident fund works in every company okay now one last thing for today what are the types of provident fund and then i will leave the lecture okay there are three types of provident fund statutory provident fund recognized provident fund unrecognized provident fund repeat statutory provident fund recognized provident fund unrecognized provident fund now see you should know the meaning of all, all three funds you know why because the taxable exam rule will differ from type to type okay see everything i am explaining why you know my ultimate object is what to come to the main point whether taxable or exam but that cannot start directly First, I explained how does the provident fund operate, the meaning part, now types. So, what are the three types? Statutory, recognized, unrecognized. Now, see, look at this drawing. There are broadly two types of job. Some people do government service. Some people do private job. In government service, provident fund is compulsory. Means any department of government you work, you work in income tax department, income tax department also there are employees you work in customs department you work anywhere in government service provident fund is always there and if something is compulsory it is called statutory have you heard have you heard the word statutory yes. actually statute means law and when law makes something compulsory it becomes statutory the word statute means law only and you know there is one law provident fund act 1925 actually there are two acts of provident fund provident fund act 1925 provident fund act 1952 you are finding i am saying same thing you are not listening there there are two acts provident fund act 1925 and other one is provident fund act 1952 so that 1925 act governs government job and that act says in every government job provident fund should be there because people treat government job as a secure job yes. and in a secure job if provident fund is not there the health security you provide so that's why every government service there is a provident fund and since it is compulsory it becomes statutory
so tell me people working in government job they will always have a statutory provident fund can you see the full short form spf yes. statutory provident fund but in private sector see what i have written provident fund may be there may not, may not be there it is not compulsory because in private sector sometimes the boss is also having a small business like me i am not having a business of crores multi crores i am having a small business even i am having employees but i have not kept provident fund for them and no one will say why no provident fund in private sector there is no compulsion so see i fall in this category see my anyone working under me will be a private job right uh -huh. and i am not keeping provident fund i don't want to keep i can hardly manage to give salary to my staff provident fund means i have to do something extra only which i don't want to do but imagine if i am a very big company a coaching class at india level a broad multinational company a very big company then i might be having lakhs of staff then i can keep provident fund in short in private sector provident fund may be there may not be there okay now if it is there it can be either recognized or unrecognized provident fund now what is the difference between the two you know look here look last thing pay attention here as i told you this provident fund money is it kept in a piggy bank or invested somewhere invested. yes if it is invested as per government's directions then it becomes a recognized provident fund see provident fund is of private sector but if the private sector boss if he is investing the provident fund as per the directions of government then the provident fund will be recognized and you know why government is expecting this private sector people to invest as per government directions so that staff money is safe basically government is worried about what you know this private sector these are you know so selfish people they might use the provident fund they might invest here and there and literally they will you know waste the money and eventually when employees retirement time comes boss will say your money is lost sorry i had invested provident fund in stock market your money is lost so there is a risk see employee is given a hopes don't worry for your old age we are accumulating fund we are accumulating fund but ultimately if that fund is misinvested or invested in wrong direction the money will be lost and employees will be disappointed that risk law doesn't want to take that's why you know what law says please private sector people if you don't want to keep provident fund don't keep but if you want to keep please invest the money as per our directions and see we don't want to poke our nose basically we want if you invest as per our norms and directions the money of the staff will be safe and we are simply worried about the staff but here if boss says you mind your own business government it is my and my staff's matter it is our provident fund i will invest anywhere i want it's my choice okay do such provident fund will be not recognized unrecognized actually see only taxation treatment will be the same this will be fully exempt this will be partly partly this will be fully taxed but in this the theory doesn't get over now this three things will go in for the depth that i will not touch today at least you got an idea that what difference it makes whether it is spf rpf or upf it makes lot of difference spf means it is the government's first law because anyone working under government government will always prefer them and who makes all income tax rules government only and if someone is working in government so they will always get a priority means for them it will become fully exempt but this people are also getting priority although they are private sector people but they are investing fund money as per government directions so government is partly happy with them and partly not so happy because after all they are private sector people okay 
but these people government hate them because they are firstly private people and they are not even using the fund as per government directions so they will suffer in fact boss will not suffer see fund investment is planned by the boss but ultimately who will suffer employee employee will say what is my fault your fault is you started job in this company you should not have done job in such company but let me tell you one thing most of the companies in real life this is not there this is just for the sake of teaching you make a survey you go to any company 99% company if they have a provident fund they will always have recognized provident fund because company also feels they should do something good for the staff what is the use of such provident fund when ultimately employees are cribbing for that after all provident fund is for the employee so most of the companies have recognized, recognized provident fund but then while studying we have to study the treatment of all although this is rare but at least you should have the knowledge of the tax treatment of this okay now you know what is to be yet explained this is simple fully exam but your partly exam is how much how much exam how much taxable so there will be some formulas amounts you have to remember okay but that i will not touch now to be discussed in the next lecture you had some doubt may yeah, i told you asked so this will be further discussed in detail so my plan was provident fund three things i want to explain firstly the meaning and the concept that i explained here and then types i explained here now further discussion is about details of taxable exam taxable exam to be continued in the next lecture okay means tomorrow revise and come revise and come please revise and come please come on time please come